So, we are live. We have about like a minute and a half. To 4.30, so we'll say 4.32, I think. And then we'll get started. Maybe 4.31. We'll do 4.31. That's what we'll do. Yeah. Okay, just about 4.31, you'll get the controller, and I will uh, turn the game on. By the time the loading screen's done, we'll be ready to go. save was like a second before I saved it okay well then we know which one I'm booting up So I had a bit of a fridge horror moment here um, since the last episode, and it concerns the, the medicinal inhaler that we have um, over here. I will look in my skills later, but I need to look at this first. So we have this inhaler, which, you know, whatever, the fir our first set of it, it, it pumps Adreno into your veins, you know, a big deal. I'll probably die a few years earlier because I keep pumping my blood full of Adreno boosters, but... At the same time, if it keeps me alive now, it's probably for the best. Then I realized that when I'm sticking food items in this second slot there, I'm actually, like, inhaling these food items. And and I don't mean, like, oh, you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry, I haven't eaten in three days, I need to inhale this food to fill my stomach up. No, I mean, I'm literally, like, sticking these food items into my lungs. Then again thinking about it even further. I suppose that's just flavored vaping, isn't it? How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to the Outer Worlds, the stream edition. That's, yeah, I know, it was probably an awkward intro there, Parvati. I'm sorry. Last time, we made it to the geothermal plant with Parvati in tow, and we suited up. We got her some heavy armor so she could smack things with her hammer a little better, and I got me some light armor so I can provide fire support from far away. And this time, we're going to finish up our trek in the geothermal plant and see which light we want to shut off. Probably uh, the one for 
the cannery? I really, honestly, I don't know. I still feel like I'm missing something here with some of these people. And not just because I didn't necessarily loot all of them. Anyway, we, we're at level 5, so let's take a look at what we got here. Hey Nitro, how's it going? Missed one up, one down, one left, one right, and then B, A, and start, and it would have been the Konami code there. Do I have a sniper rifle? I believe so. I think I have a hunting rifle, which I would assume is similar to a sniper rifle. Um, I actually haven't checked to see if it is a if it has a scope on it, honestly. So I guess I can equip it and check. Can't hurt, right? Uh, this way. There we go. Alright, so what do we want to level up here today? Um, I already got dodge to 20, so that's the most important thing there. We got our dialogue options, sneak is at 20, medical's at 20. So I guess we're just going to work on the three things that I said we were going to work on, which is ranged, dialogue, and leadership. And I may have switched my priorities with leadership in between episodes because I'm thinking, um, I was thinking inspiration would be the one that we put more points into, but it might actually end up being determination because um, it seems like the passives for that are a little bit better, but I, I could be wrong. I don't know yet. We'll see, but I know I want to put uh, three points into that this time. I want to put three points into this. Get Intimidate up to there, so it gets that passive. Um, I'm not really that concerned with the passives with Intimidate, because it's mostly just creature stuff. Um, it makes them run away from me, which I guess is fine. It's less experience that I have to worry about getting. Oh, excuse me, but... Eh. I'm not as concerned about it as these other ones because these other ones are like I can confuse um, auto mechanicals and I can force uh, enemies to fear uh, to cower, which reduces their armor later on. So that's pretty helpful. Um, we have four points left, so let's put them into the guns. There we go, and that should be good. We've unlocked location hit effects for tactical time dilation. Hitting enemies in different locations during that means uh, maims or cripples those body parts. Try different locations, see different effects. Hits the chest, produce different effects when using different weapons. Okay. Got it. I think I had that already, but I'll, I'll keep it in mind. And I don't think we can... No, we can't pick a perk. Not until next level. My inventory is at 61 of 90, so i got to be careful of that. We'll see. i got to get Raiden and Armstrong to host a meme review. A meme review of their own game, perhaps? That looks like a... Yeah, that's a scope. Uh, that's me moving. Okay. So it kind of zooms. Kind of. It's got a little bit of zoom. Oop, i got to fix picture size again. Uh, let's see. There we go. That should work good. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like a like a PVC pipe, basically. I don't know. I mean, it. I mean, the site itself is fine on the inside of it, but the outside of it, again, it looks like a PVC pipe, basically. So that's certainly a thing. Use. I don't think I want to do that just yet. Don't think I want to press any strange buttons without knowing what they do first. Uh, so we went in there and we got Higgins's code. Actually, let me see what my journal says about his code before I go entering it. Oh, excuse me. As you reprogram the mechanicals, change the behavior might make getting around the plant easier. Hmm, okay. I guess we could do that. That's fine. So then, use terminal. Let's see. We can modify their behavior. Let's see, assessing behavior mod, they are on guard mode. Targets are intruders. What about each other? If monitor target intruders, any attempt to alter the setting is punishable by company law, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. I don't think anybody's coming for Higgins at this point. Find intruders. Has spacer's choice auto mechanicals. Sure. That should work out pretty okay for us. They'll probably start killing each other now. And return to root. Select new mode. What's the other mode? Error. Been, uh, mandated to remain in guard mode. Attempt to alter it is blah, 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 blah. 
Well, if Mr. Higgins ever gets out of this alive, he's probably going to get quite a few infractions for that, but... Well, whoever said he was getting out of this alive? <laughs> I don't know if he ever leaves here, I'll be completely honest. See, a sentry, ammo, ammo. Ooh. Oh no, that was a sentry in inventory. Okay. Well, nice little boost to our EXP right at the start there. Hello, Mr. Spratt. Oh, okay, this is where that other door would have went. Okay. These, like, decontamination showers or something? That's what it looks like to me. I could be wrong, though. Those are a ni That's a nice chunk of ammo, a bypass shunt and a mag pick, though. So that's rather nice. Um, let's see. Report repair logs? Okay, I can check a repair log. So, mechanics log number 0012. Corporate just sent a team of technicians to conduct a complete refill of a refit of all our mechanicals, every sentry and drone. It's not my place to say so, but doesn't this run contrary to the Spacer's Choice mission to be as cheap as possible? Just in case I'm audited, I would like to formally express how grateful I am to be part of the Spacer's Choice family. Spacer's Choice is the leading brand affordable sundry across Halcyon. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's Choice. Oh boy. Now mechanics log number 0020. Hey MB, how's it going? You want to get this game but cheaper? Well, you can watch this until uh, until you get the game for yourself once it goes on a price drop. I think it was on sale, but I think the on sale price was like only $5 different from the previous price just recently. So guess what your search engine recommended again? Phil Swift goes in a violent massacre to get materials for the next flex tape before the and ballas find out where he hid their friends' bodies at. Yeah, your search engine... Are you sure your search engine isn't on crack there, Nitro? Because that seems like something that someone on crack would say. Not that I know anybody who's on crack. Just an assumption, I guess. Anyway. <laughs> I just finished a routine maintenance on our mechanical sentries. I found some strange modifications to their logic modules. I haven't had time to run a diagnostic, so I don't know what's been modified. All I know is that these modifications were introduced in our recent refit. The company went through the trouble of refitting every single mechanical in the plant not long ago, guessing this was the work of those visiting technicians. I filed a report, but my supervisor told me not to worry about it. Said the company knew what I, it was doing, ordered me to forget about any alleged modifications to the logic modules. Decided to do a bit of sleuthing by, myself, by my own self. Got my hands on a logic module. Time to do a little experimentation. Oh god, Higgins, what did you do? Uh, hastily written note. Borrowed copy of the Young Spacer's Guide to Mechanical Engineering. I think it's volume 3. I need something to read down in the pit. Much obliged. So it looks like Higgins is the one that's been messing around with everything here. If I had to guess. Level head. Like he, it seems like he's the one who's been... Uh, Taking everything and touching all the buttons and doing all that crazy stuff. Um, well, we only have our one target there now, but uh, I think there were a couple of doors down here with Higgins, so we can go and check, tell him his code worked, I guess. Let's see what we can do from there. Might as well put my gun away if I can. There we go since it's not all that useful to me, right? He just wants to keep his gun out, doesn't he? All right, we'll keep it out then, fine. Be that way. Crazy hypochondriac bastard. I think it's on crack and meth, too. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked. Combination of factors sounds about right. So, Higgins, that code worked. Thank you. I appreciate your help. Okay, that's not a door. Never mind, I thought one of these were doors, and they're not doors, it's just the, the, the power room. Alright, back up. Parvati, you're going to get your exercise today. Anything on this side? I already checked over there. The vicar's probably on our ship, and he's probably like, what the hell are they doing? What's taking them so long? It's just a power regulator, what's the big deal? Oh, Vicar, if only you knew. If only you knew. Okay, this is where the door was that I didn't go through yet. Here we go. Let me see here. So this door's locked. 
Uh, three to pick. Okay. This door leads to... Oh. Leads to sentries killing sentries. Oh boy. Let's just let's just go around that then. Yeah, they sound like they're having a grand old time at it. Mm hmm. I just want to see if I can figure out. This is a bit of wall hacks, but I want to see if I can figure out where his movement pattern is taking him. I don't know if I even hit him there. Oops. Well, my aim is as good as usual. So that's good to know. Good thing they give me so much ammo. Had good aim on the shot first, but after that it didn't really didn't really work out all that well. Uh, ooh, did I get everything? I think I did. Well, I can't loot him anymore, so I'm gonna assume I did. <laughs> Use E2. Okay, what's the other terminal say first before I... Have we been here? Evidently not, because I didn't loot these people. Well, hold on a second. I guess I wasn't really a target at that point, though, was I? So I guess I didn't have to blast him to bits. He wouldn't have bothered me, but... Oh, well. I will tell you what, though, it did make it getting through here a little bit easier. I just hope all these poor bastards were dead before all the auto mechanicals just went haywire. Ouch. Some of these guys are, uh, dealing with some definitely large, large, uh, oofs there. Okay, where in the hell are we now? We haven't been here yet, I don't think. Okay, that's where the ladder leads. E3. Still don't know what all these are for, but I guess we'll find out later. Okay, this door's barred. Uh... I wanted to say, aha, like we've been there before, but it doesn't look familiar. Same here. Although we may have been here before, because I don't think that multiple of those would have been left unlooted. Okay, here's the power room. Okay, so we have been here before. Got it. All right, I'm starting to fill my map in, just a little bit in my brain. So that was this way, okay. These guys were all dead. Um, this just leads up and over here. All right, let's go see if I can find that terminal that I didn't hack before. Can I get over this from here? No. If I can, I didn't do it right, so. All right, so there's this thing to use, but I don't want to use that just yet until I know what they all do, so. Let's just go over here and see what this does. 
Engineering 15, shut off the steam release valves. Okay, sure, we'll use that. Executing release valve successfully closed. Cool. Now I can go this way and definitely not get blasted by the steam after I take stuff out of this. Bolter pistol. Okay, well, it's probably a little bit better than uh, the one that we had. I guess I'll take it in case. Mr. Ouch. Magnum, bit cartridge, and toss ball card. Thomas B. Henry. Collectible toss ball card. Okay. Ooh, that's a rough way to go, friend. Uh, workbench? I probably have a couple things I can repair. Oh, that's what's on the other side of that door. Okay, got it. Modifications. Okay, cool. Hey, Conquer and Adam. How you guys doing? You have indefinitely arrived. Nice. <laughs> I am indefinitely glad you're here. Uh, to install your mod, first select the item you wish to upgrade, then choose what type of mod you wish to install. Finally, pick the mod to install, and boom, you upgraded your item. Both weapons and armor can be modified. Mods can't be removed once they're used, so put them on your favorite gear. Jock weapons are built for the discerning warrior who wants a custom and personalized weapon, just like everyone else. Oh, so that's that's the name of the, the weapon customizing program. Okay. So I can install mods on any number of things here. Um, let's see. That would change the weapons damage to plasma. That doesn't do anything for me. This gives magazine size. Okay. Uh, oh, hang on. There was more. Uh, I can install scopes. Gyro sight, which in, uh, decreases the spread on ranged weapons. And extendo sight, which increases the range on this weapon. Effective range, that is. So that's... Okay, interesting. I'll keep that in mind. Um, don't want to put anything on Parvati's stuff. I don't think she really needs anything all that great. I mean, the, the shock mod might be pretty good in here, but I don't know if that's a good idea to keep it there, you know? So. Uh, what about armor? Modifications. Uh, so this is on me, I think, and this is on Parvati, I, th I think. I think that's how that works. Um, what kind of mods do we have for this? Thug kit increases melee weapons and defense skills. So that would be something to give to Parvati. Dialogue skills and leadership skills, that's something to give to me. <laughs> so it might not be such a bad idea. All right, interesting. I'll keep that in mind. Um, let's see here. We'll do our modifications and stuff on the ship, I think. I, I think I would rather do it that way. So we've established sort of where everything kind of is now in this place. At least I sort of have in my head, anyway. How are we doing so far? We're doing good so far. My aim is just as crappy as usual. So that's par for the course. <laughs> Wouldn't be a uh, start of one of my streams if my aim wasn't incredibly off. So that's that's a good thing. We're all in good shape there. Uh, this was locked, right? Yeah, I, I don't have the lock picking to get through that. I don't know what's in there, but whatever. Okay, so we came in right around here, and this is where we needed to go, was right over here. Time to see what this does. I'm gonna probably make a hard save before I press any crazy buttons in here, I think. Uh, any Trezier or all, was all the Trezier already taken? Use terminal. Yes, well, give me a moment. Say what you want, but you'll still stress that mine is better than yours. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're willing to give me so much credit there, Adam. <laughs> it, it just takes me a minute usually to get used to the the uh, aim, and then I'm a little bit better off. And like I said before, I'm I'm a worse shot in first person than I am in uh, over the shoulder. Over the shoulder shooters in third person, I'm a little bit better. Maybe because those are the ones I grew up with. I don't really know. So, master control terminal plant status. 
We have this X report brought to you by Spacious Choice. Emerald Vale is operating at 22% efficiency. Power is currently being distributed to the cannery and the botanical laboratory. Structural damage detected. Please notify your designated supervisor. Redirect power. Safety fe failures detected. High likelihood of moderate to severe structural damage. Redirecting power is an irreversible procedure. Power redistribution has failed. A redirection has failed. Manual override required. Please activate all three electrical track switches. Okay, now we know what those switches do. Uh, E1, E2, and E3. Because they... Uh, It'll be easy enough, especially now that we've uh, killed all the, the robots in here. The mechanicals. Thinking about it, they call them auto-mechanicals. Does that mean that, like, if you called them robots, would that be considered a slur? I don't know. I don't know how that would work in a universe like this. All right, well, let's just follow the sprat, since it seems to be going in the direction that I'm going as well. Not going to hurt you, little buddy. Just looking for a switch. E1. All right. Uh, well, if we send power, if we send power back to the cannery, they're all gonna have to go back to the thing, and it's not, that's not what they want, for sure. Um, but if we send the power to the botanical labs, I mean, I guess, again, I, I'm, the only, the difference I'm seeing here is, for one, in one case, they have to deal with a dude who has a stick shoved up his ass telling them to work all day. In the other case, they just get high all day. So I'm kind of, like, I don't know if I feel better about the getting high all day thing. I think I feel better about the getting high all day thing. But I guess it depends on if we reroute too much and it just, like, blows up the city or something. That, like, like a megaton style, that would be something. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, huh? Because we could talk about it. Okay. Don't want to talk about it. That's fine. Uh, that one's upstairs. Okay. One more switch. Can be a decent shop. I need to get back into the groove, though people. Except for most games you play again after a Yeah, that's the thing about, uh, you know, just playing games on a long break. You, you get rusty, you know what I mean? If you're not playing them, like, over and over and over again. Like, if you watch somebody who streams, like, you know, a first-person shooter a lot, or, like, a multiplayer first-person shooter or something, they're, they're a dead-eye. Their shots are always on target, basically, unless there's, like, some serious issue there. But um, if, you, if you don't play them very often, like, in my case, then you, you kind of... Your shot becomes better by the time you're done playing it, but by the time you're done playing it, then you're done for a while, so. I don't... I don't think that's supposed to be coming out of the thing there. Like, I don't think that's supposed to be dripping out of the, the container. I got a bad feeling about this. I think we're going to need to skedaddle out of here pretty quickly, Parvati, once we, uh, once we are done. Because we'll be lucky if this whole place doesn't blow sky high at the rate I'm going here. Knowing my luck, I wouldn't be shocked. Once we do this, they're still going back. Nope. Hey, mister? Yeah. Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but... I just gotta ask you. Okay, what's up? Do you understand what you're about to do? I'm about to either kill one type of people or the other. Well, not kill necessarily, but I'm about to kill the lifestyle of either the people at the cannery or the people at the botanical lab. But I would appreciate your opinion. You live here, after all. I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. No, that's fair. hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements there's barely enough saltuna to fill our bellies anymore right but the town's got some good people in it decent hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how they don't deserve to be punished yeah but neither do the people at the lab like that's what i'm yeah this this is kind of the option that i'm i'm more leaning towards is the people at the botanical lab are decent hard-working folk living their lives the only way they know how as well and i don't think they deserve to be punished either miss mcdevitt's built something beautiful somehow she's talked the ground into giving life again it's yeah 
Plain to see she's made the Vale a better place. Fed the hungry, tended the sick. Gave a home to those that had none. But Miss McDevitt delights in Edgewater's suffering. She wants to hurt the town. Do you really want to be party to that kind of hatred? I mean, I hate to break it to you, but I, I think Reed also wants to hurt the botanical lab. I think Reed delights in their suffering, too. Um, and he says Edgewater's going to die without workers and power, so I guess that's a fair point to bring up, too. Well, that sure sounds like Mr. Thompson. If he was standing here, I imagine he'd remind us of how we're all one big, happy Spacer's Choice family. In Mr. Thompson's eyes, those deserters are still part of the Spacer's Choice family. The family must work together in order to survive. I hate to say it, but I think Mr. Thompson's got a point. Unless those deserters come back, Edgewater's as good as dead. Cutting off their power might be the only way. Hmm. I don't feel any better about this decision now than I did before I had this conversation. <laughs> don't you say the lesser two evils for you, getting everyone high all the time or forcing people to work for someone as a stick-up his ass? It's weird for you, though most people that have played with you in the past get, would say you don't get rusty and you're good as the last time you played, despite you not having played the game since then. Well, that's a good thing, though, Conquer. That means that... Uh, this, see, in my case, for games like this, I have to, like, if I play an RPG or something like that, I could just pick it up and play it like nothing else. It's just probably because I've played enough of them in my lifetime. So I'm, I'm kind of similar to you in that way, except with RPGs. With first-person shooters, I'm rusty as hell. I have to practice at it. It's like playing an instrument, a musical instrument or something. I couldn't just pick it back up again. I'd have to practice with it for a while, so. See, I... I see the I see problems and I see solutions in both sides of this and that is not helping me here. Like that. I just I felt like I had to say something. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um I'm just listening to you. No, it's it's good that you did because I, I I appreciate the idea of being able to bounce these ideas off of someone. Can't just let them sit in my head all day. Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I, no one's ever Told me those words in that order. That's because your mom would. You know what? I'm not even gonna go there. Some elixirs. I can't believe I didn't see those before. Okay. Oh, they, they even labeled them Edgewater Botanical Lab. Great. Okay. What was our status again? 22% efficient. That's dis just awful, man. Not good at all. I need to go shut off an oven because there's an oven on upstairs. So before I make this decision, I apologize, but I need to go shut it off. I'll be right back. I didn't check. I can go stir it. No, I stirred it. No, I mean after. Oh, it's it's done. I oh. think. Okay. I think it's done. I should. I shut off the, the heat, so it should be good. It smelled done. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm back. Played Smash Ultimate with club members three weeks ago, and then played again last week, and they swore you were still as good as then, or even better. Hmm. You haven't played in between then. Well, that's good though. That's good. Um. Redirect power, are you sure you want to continue? It's an irreversible procedure. They're really telling me, hey, this is going to have severe consequences. All right, just continue. We're redirecting it to. So, redirecting it to Edgewater means that everybody comes back together, The cor and corporate will basically be like, everything will remain the same essentially they, they'll have to go back to working like you know dogs in order to keep themselves alive corporate will send less and less replacements everybody will get the plague again 
Botanical laboratory, everybody has to live off the land. It's hard work, but they're not reliant on Spacer's Choice anymore, which means two things. One, they can make a life for themselves. And two, corporate's probably going to be pretty pissed about it. In addition to that, they will also have to deal with the influx of people coming to the botanical labs that have the plague. And I don't know if they can do that, but at the same time, sending them all back to Edgewater by redirecting the power there means that they're all going to get the plague. So I'm either sending them people that have a sickness that they may or may not be able to deal with, or I'm sending all of them to the sickness. We're really getting down with the sickness here, aren't we? Um, I choose weed! That's not a good sound. Uh... Well, it doesn't look like it's going to explode. There's no timer. So, deserters' reputation increased. Great. Deserters are now agreeable. I bet Spacer's Choice is now kill on sight, aren't they? Oh, boy. Spacer's Choice reputation decreased. Well, they were agreeable before. Yeah, I don't know. I can, I can look. I can look at my reputation here. Where, where is my reputation anyway? Is it in the journal? No. Character. Reputation. Okay, so they're still agreeable to me. 29 and 16, 48, 0. A good employee in the making. Yeah, all right. Yes, decisions, decisions. Exactly. It's tough. Well, all right. We're still fine with both of them, I guess. I like that for you for most games, like you can pick up games you played in the past and still more or less remember the mechanics. Somebody write that quote down in the book of mono quotes. <laughs> I choose weed. Yeah. It's probably already written down somewhere because I chose weed back when we played Gothic 1 as well, so. Titus Androidicus. Uh huh. Well, alright then. Island of Murder. Oh boy. So, no reinforcements? There's still nothing trying to, to murder me. Okay. I, I think that's going to change when we go back to Edgewater to try to retrieve the power regulator, but, uh, you know, I don't think I'm going to be using this hunting rifle. I'm just going to unequip it for now. So, we are going... Back to Edgewater. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, she has a perk now, right? Yeah, I can pick a perk for her. I forgot to do that. Um, what can I give her? 30% base health, 30% threat generated, minus 30 threat generated in engineering. So these ones, we think you have to get... These are unique ones based on their... Uh, based on the partner. So... Hmm. Engineering, chance of looting mods, and tactical time dilation meter uh, recharge when she performs her ability. Oh, okay. Interesting. I don't know. I kind of feel like these are pretty good, these per these exclusive perks that are that are hers, you know? Like, the other stuff is like, okay, it's fine, you know, if they want to th generate... I could just duck behind a corner if I want her to generate more threat. Like, duck behind cover and then just frickin' have her use her ability or something? That seems like it would be halfway decent. Uh, what does engineering get me, anyway? Let me make sure before I do this. Um, engineering. So, we can repair weapons and armor in the inventory, break down weapons and armor for 20% chance to extract a basic mod. Uh, chance items you repair will become pristine. Okay. Eh. 
it's not that great, but I, I st I'm still kind of leaning more towards just have it, taking her unique abilities and going from there. So I think... Oh, behaviors, distance, weapon, mode. It's told to attack target companion and continues to fight until combat is over. Always engages in attacks when the player enters combat. Only attacks target companion has been explicitly told to. Any weapons which may melee in range based on the distance to the enemy. It only attacks with ranged. I didn't see these before. She has 613 health. That is quite a bit, I think. Um, follow to moderate distance. Follow from a distance. You know, medium is probably fine. And... I'm kind of okay with aggressive, honestly. I think aggressive should be fine. Lots of different things I need to look at here that I don't know about. I'm going to take her exclusive thing. I think it's important. Okay, so we've unlocked everything else, too. Okay. Cool. So that takes care of that now. Now we need to go back to Edgewater so that they can be angry at me, probably. Because, I mean, who else would have uh, done this? Who else would have un uh, rerouted the power away from them? I should check in at the bot uh, botanical lab, though, to see what they've got going on. Now that I've done them a favor. I also don't know if enemies respawn or anything in this game, so I guess we're going to have to find out. Bless you. Now those guys are still dead. And I could probably fast travel too, but yeah, it's all right. It's not that big of a deal. I got I got fast travel right here with the zoom function. I just kneel my way through. Hello, Cole. Hola. The gang's all here. And by that I mean you and Steve. Nice. I see the chat's exploding today as usual. Yeah, there's quite a few people here, which is good. That's a chicken. I got an autosave for looking at a chicken. Nice. The chicken's obviously... Where did, where did uh, Adelaide go? Is she tending to the weed? Oh, gosh. So great. oh, there's somebody. Is that Adelaide? Yep, that's Adelaide. Hi. You hear that? That low, pleasant hum of electricity? It whispers across the veil like the winds of change. You've done well. I would have paid my last five bits to see the look on Reed's face when the last lamp in town burnt out and the cannery fell to silence. Well, it's still going to be a little bit before that happens, but, uh, so what happens now? Time's come to look toward the future. We'll grow, I expect. A lot of workers out there with nowhere else to go. Sure they won't turn to marauding? Got more mouths to feed. Not as many as you'd think. We're not about to let the whole town join our flock. Just the ones willing to renounce their corporate loyalties and live the way nature intended. So some of them will have to turn to marauding. Why did you help us? You don't know who we are. You don't owe us a thing. The plant's crawling with mechanicals, so it stands to reason you risked your life. Between your camp and Reed's cannery, yours is the better way of life. Don't like the idea of being Reed's lackey. Didn't do this for you. I'm trying to repair a ship. I'd rather not say. Well, I'll be honest. I kind of do feel like their way of life is a little bit better because, like, you know, it's, it's working nine to five versus working with your own two hands to build your own living, basically. And so I guess hers might be, it seems to me like the better way of life anyway. Not quite like anyone else I've met. 
I haven't had your consciousness programmed by the board. That's because I missed the board by about 70 years, ma'am. Okay, well, Parvati, I hate to do this to you, but we got to go back and see what your town's up to now that we've uh, essentially condemned them to hell. But why? The power regulators in the town. Hmm. Which means we may have to slaughter the entirety of Edgewater if they're pissed at us when we go waltzing through the front door. So did you find out the thing about the granary yet? No. Hmm. I don't know if there is a thing other than, hey, we're only going to let certain people go in. Well, that's not the thing. I recall there being a thing about the way they do things over at the granary that's particularly disgusting and despicable. Hmm. It was from the uh, pacifist run. They probably use dead bodies to fertilize the weed. I mean, actually, yeah, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. I thought they use dead bodies as food. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of marauders out here. They can use their dead bodies to fertilize the weed. Oh, Reed's gonna have words with us. Well, even if that's the case, it's too late now. I already, I already flipped the switch. You can't unflip the switch, apparently. <laughs> so. I was trying to see if he was walking towards me. That's just me walking towards him. Alright, well. So you stole the power regulator from Edgewater? I'm about to. Oh, I haven't oh. stolen it yet. I have to go into Edgewater to take it. Now that I've rerouted the I've rerouted the power away from Edgewater. I don't know though, it seems like the kind of thing like that a character might do in a situation like this, who isn't like, you know, hyper capitalistic. The board is the most important, blah blah blah. I mean I, I get the pragmatism of keeping everybody together down here, but not for a life like this. I mean, to be fair, they're like, oh, we work better together and all this other crazy shit, and then the board just kind of, kind of, lets everyone rot and die down here. Well, that's what I was saying, is that if, if everybody comes back here, they got to deal with the plague, they got to deal with the fact that not everyone's able to work, they still got to deal with all the fees and everything, and it's like, okay. It seems like this planet is just, like, fucked beyond belief. Good thing we're leaving in a few minutes. Ah, uh, yes, a manta queen. <laughs> Yay, we'll have to kill one of those eventually. Eh, I can't imagine they're too bad. They're not Tarrasque difficult. I mean, I guess. Alright, let's see what the consequences of our actions are. I do like these gray area decisions, though, in video games, because not enough games do these sorts of gray area decisions and force you to live with your consequences, and... It's 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 nice to not be like railroaded into a single decision. You know what I mean? See, the big thing is not feel like you're for, railroaded uh, into a gray single area decision. Decisions. Anyway. My favorites are the ones that like put you in that kind of situation. You know, the Fire Emblem situation where there are likable characters on both sides with flaws that you want to explore, but then they throw you into a gray area decision that basically just says one of these characters are going to die horribly in some horrible way, and everyone they know and love is also probably going to die in a horrible way. Mm -hmm. But you need to make this decision right here, right now. So you mean Three Houses? Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Even though I haven't played Three Houses. Hi, Reed. Probably me by now. has suffered a cavalcade of disasters. Plague, marauders, desertion. Then you wandered in town. And I was so damn sure our luck was starting to turn. I never knew how right I was. Just answer one question for me. Why'd you do it? Well, why did you trust a stranger? Let me ask that a question with a question there. Yeah, it really isn't a personal thing. I, I just needed your power regulator, and I decided one of these power regulators was worth less than the other. That power regulator is company property. Sure is. Whatever you were hoping to find down here, I advise you to turn around and leave. I have got guards posted with orders to fire on you. Okay. That I can deal with. Intimidate 30. don't want them bleeding all over my power regulator. <laughs> well, actually, I would kind of like to know what's going to happen now that I've, you know, made an irreversible decision. Edgewater's dead. Our cannery's dead. Adelaide's deserters are never coming back. Nope. 
Spacer's choice will shut us down before long. Some of us will die of illness by then. Some will move on. Some will starve. So exactly how it was going to be if I rerouted the power to you anyway. Whereupon I shall be processed and then duly imprisoned for gross incompetence. Oh boy. Well, sorry that it had to come to this. Apologies won't give us our lives back. But for what it's worth, I am sorry to. Well, at least he's not being a dick about it. I mean, he's about to shoot my face off as soon as I get out of here, but, you know. Alright, bye, Reed. I guess we get to go deal with guards now. 15,000 experience? Holy shit. Done. It's a lot of... Your sauce is done. Sauce is done? Yes. Yeah. Deserters are now revering. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so those guys are corporate guard. They do have the health bars. Okay. So they are ordered to okay. attack me. Not yet. If I don't, uh, you know, blast their faces off. Uh, it's been done for like 10, 15 minutes now. Okay. I can't tell if she hit him or not. Okay. I think she did. Oh, there we go. What else we got? Up there? Okay. I see him. Okay. See ya. Good luck. Let's see. Let's get him up. Flank him there, Parvati. There we go. Alright. Well, my reputation with Spacer's Choice is probably in the dirt now, so that's not good. I mean, I did just melt a dude. So, right, control armor. I can melt that down. There we go. I mean, I'm surprised it's not already melted down, I'll be honest, but. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Oh, they killed the Sprats! Come on, guys. That's not cool. Alright, let's see what you've got, friend. More riot control armor. We can put that away. Alright. Don't you realize you aren't using the world, you're using Slora or Sloga? Yeah, I guess so. The world is, is complete time stop, except for, like, the Joe stars, isn't it? Cole, you've watched JoJo. You know what the world you, is. You got it right. I did? Okay, good. The world, also known as a test of how bullshit a main character's powers can actually get over the course of a ten-minute fight. <laughs> Pick up power regulator. All right, we've got it. Man, this, is, this game is guy. literally just Fallout in space and slightly more clinically depressing. Well, I mean, if you want to be honest about it, New Vegas was a little bit clinically depressing with some of its uh, decisions you had to make. I haven't played it, but I have seen a couple of things with it. Oh, this is stealing. Well, I mean, I already sort of did steal from them. I already sort so. of ruined this entire town's existence, so... Yeah, so we're going to just take stuff. Sorry, Parvati, I know you've called this place home forever, but... Also, it's about to not to be a home to anybody. Why are they doing, guy? What, Parvati? Yeah. Gave her heavy armor. Nice. And a machine, heavy machine gun, light oh, machine so gun, she's rather. Doom Marine. She's an, she has an LMG and a shock hammer. You and I have got nothing more to say. Oh, you're right about that, Reed. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. See you in hell. What's going on over there? It's like a town gathering of sorts. Something like that. Uh, it looks like those are Spacer's Choice Guards, and they probably don't like me too much anymore, so maybe we should Get just the fuck steer out. clear. They're mixed on me now. Uh, I'm neutral to their faction. Seeing some areas that are good and some that need improvement, you don't say. Hey, John, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Long time no see there. Yes, I did choose to shut down the cannery town, yeah. I chose to say, uh, it's probably better if they smoke weed all day. So, yeah, that's a thing. I remember there was something significantly horrible about both sides. I just don't remember what, like, 
either side was. I feel like this town was using the dead bodies of, like, the citizens or the plague people as, like, food. And yeah, they... that was implied, actually. Um, they were talking about how they were trying to shove non-fish particles into the Saltuna processors, and that means that they're using dead bodies as food. I don't know if that's what the botanical gardens are doing, and that's why they've made the land livable again, or what. I don't know if they're using the dead bodies as fertilizer, but, I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> dead bodies eventually deteriorate into fertilizer anyway, so... You know, the worst part is... You know, you know. Tarot Ray Biological, that looks disturbing. Welcome to this game's creature design. Yeah, that's fair. I get a distinct feeling of, like, a, a vibes from Rage whenever I... Uh, not of Rage, but the video game Rage... Whenever I walk outside here and everything sort of like, um, all the textures sort of like shuffle into place, basically, it's <laughs> it's weird. But it's like there's like a filter that like passed across the screen like three times. It's like basic, medium, advanced. So, how loading ultra high quality, sixty frames per second. One moment, please. Yeah, basically. Okay, so we have the regulator. Right there. All done. So, we've got a couple of things here. we got, the, oh, the medicine. You know, I never turned that into anybody. I guess I could. <laughs> you okay? That's my spine. Oh, okay. I guess I could turn in the anthracillin, because that'll at least help them a little bit along. Yeah, you already fucked the entire town. That's a little bit more. Well, no, I, I got nothing. That experimental anthracillin ain't doing nothing in my inventory, so... Might as well hand it to somebody. They all seem relatively okay with me, though, considering I just shut down their power source well, to be here. Fair, maybe Abernathy hasn't told everyone yet. Or whatever the fuck it's Topson. Like. Topson. Yeah. Hard to watch streams at work now, unfortunately. Yeah, I know how that goes, John. I know. I'm sure you're busy with the, with all of this job stuff and everything. So it's, it's tough. But I, I do appreciate you coming in here. That's... I, I do appreciate whenever you get the time to. So thanks for coming. How you been, man? How's everything going over on your end of the on your end of the planet there? Your end that I feel like I should visit sometime in the future. That thing looks like a behemoth. That is a Raptodon. Whatever that's supposed to be. It looks like something straight out of Final Fantasy, except slightly more terror. If anything is, you get a decent amount of downtime, but you oh, so you have restrict okay, yeah, restricted internet would make a would make a difference there. But it's good that you get some downtime. That's rather nice. So you don't always get that when you're doing jobs and stuff, you know. Okay, so town's fucked. Do I take pity on an old man or do I give it to somebody who's going to sell it to the highest bidder? I think I'm going to take pity on an old man. I know he's a lunatic, possibly, but... I was on the mend, the cannery had to go and shut down. So you're on the mend now? You're taking an awful risk trusting me, you know? I have your medicine. Let's see it. Don't keep us waiting. But he says he's on the mend now, so that's interesting. Um, I do have the medical. Esther tells me you have a tendency towards hypochondria. I don't know what that means. Is that some sort of medical condition? Is my plague getting worse or something? <laughs> No, not exactly. You obviously need this. The medicine belongs to the authorities. Anthocillin's worth a lot to the right buyer. I'm just going to give it to him. Forget it. Wash my hands of this whole thing. The first hit's always the best. Scratch together all the bits I had around the domicile. It ain't as much as you deserve, but it's all I got. Okay, cool. Thank you. My reputation with Spacer's Choice has increased again. <laughs> you now, instead oh of God. negative 100 reputation... Spacer's Choice are now confused. <laughs> They're like, wait, why the fuck? Why are you helping these people? You just shut down the can... That's like, oh, God, that's funny. Good, working away and learning a lot. Good, good. Always good. Keeping busy, doing all that stuff. That's good. Hoping to hit the slopes this winter. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. I gotta Last get time my... I was on the slopes, I tripped and fucking twisted my ankle. Yeah, that's no good. I don't want to talk about that. Hoping to get my board out again this year so I can, you know, get it all waxed and everything, so... 
Yeah, it's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. Apparently, Spacer's choice is very confused now. Maybe I should try skiing it's a very confused again at some choice. point or another. Maybe borrow one of your old snowboards. Mm, maybe. Maybe this time I won't wipe out and break my fucking ankle. Perhaps. Uh, I'm gonna persuade and see if I get anything else out of him. You're wringing the blood out of me. Here, you can have whatever's in my pockets. Hate to do it to an old man like that, but thank you. He gave me like 800 bit cartridges from that. Cool. Parvati, any any input on all this? Or are you okay with any of this? I oh, I pressed X to talk again. I can't stop thinking on Edgewater, Captain. I'm glad the deserters are going to be all right now they got power. But what about the town? All those people. I know. It's it's a tough situation, Parvati, and we we but we had to get the regulator. Well, I had to get the regulator to get off this planet. I'll be honest. It's it's. It's fine, it's great, but this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> oh no, we doomed an entire town. How terrible. I just want to I just want to see what happens now that my reputation's confused cuz they're probably like, "What what do we do with this guy? He's helped us, he's hurt us, he's what uh so Okay, see you in a minute there, Conquer. Twitch app crashed again. Oh my god. <clears throat> Science weapons have weird and useful effects. Hmm. 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 I could get an N-ray gun. That seems like it'd be pretty good. Negative rays! I don't know if that's what they're actually called, but you know. In your playthrough, you did something very different in the Edgewater situation. Oh, did you? <laughs> Did something very different. Does that different involve murdering a lot of people? Well, if it's not too spoilery for anything that's coming in the future and you want to enlighten all of us, you may. Unless there's an option that, like, you nuke both of them. And you get negative rep with fucking everyone. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you got a follower. I did. Let's see who it was. Optical1225, thank you for following. I appreciate that. Thanks a bunch. Sorry for the heavy breathing in the background. My other brother fell asleep next to the mic. And unfortunately, he snores. Well, he has sleep apnea, so it's, it's he has hard. What? He has sleep apnea, so he has restricted, no, I just didn't know. restricted airways when he, he's sleeping. So. Yep. To be fair, I just have trouble sleeping in general. <laughs> Showing the club. If you put a fucking camera next to my bed, you'd see me wake up every 20 minutes and just go fuck under my breath. Oh, I don't have that kind of trouble. I just wake up after five hours or six I'm hours that of I sleeping. I need another half a tablet of melatonin, but that also scares me because I'm afraid I'll sleep till three in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what you need is you need to take it not at like one in the morning. I mean, you're right. <laughs> like you need to be taking your your slow release in like two hours from now. Is this your so. ship? My star, she is just so handsome. Parvati, does she have a name yet? What's her drive? Mom? We we've oh. been here already. <laughs> to me back before. Then. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. Well, you Edgewater won't last may not months. be in a proper crew now, but you do belong to a crew now. Company expects me back at my post. Yeah. Uh. So you've never been on... You've been on a ship before this. I, I literally dragged you onto the ship to get a sawed-off shotgun a little while ago. So let's just cut to the chase. I mean, the, yeah, the deserters left Edgewater behind. I mean, you may as well as well. I have imagined it, but... Until you came along, I never thought I had the choice. Nobody thinks they have the choice until I come along, it seems. You can say no. But... Can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. Well, that's good because I don't know what any of those things are. I can do that too. So you have the Doom Marine on your side now, a Doom Marine that can fix your ship. <laughs> oh my God! What a mean thing to say, number four there. Um, actually, I kind of would like to know her reasoning. I'm, I mean, it's I was pretty much figuring it was a sold thing already, but I would I would like to know her reasoning. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I've had my misgivings about Miss McDevitt and the deserters, but 
You took pity on them and sent power to their garden, even though you knew Mr. Thompson would hate you for it. Right. All this time, you've been determined to get your regulator back, get your ship up and running, and cut a path out of this place. And well, I want it. Okay. Well, I think that's fair. I mean, it's... Uh, Again, I thought it was... A, I figured it was a sold thing anyway, so I just... Uh, you know what? Just just pick where you want to sleep. It's fine. Go. Yes. I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain. I can call you Captain now. You can. I got a Captain. I, I, I'm getting the feeling this is... I'm getting the feeling this is all, a, a, like, a big dream for you. you. You might want to pinch yourself. I'm still not even under the impression that I'm fully alive here, so... Uh, you might want to pinch yourself for all of us. Yeah, apparently I'm Captain Alex Hawthorne now. So. It's another way to solve the problem. It's a spoil if you want to replay. Okay, so that's fair enough. No, no big deal then. I don't need to know it then. That's good. If I replay, I'll figure it out. Back, though, I don't know if your previous message... It went through there, Conker. Welcome back. Um, hopefully Twitch app doesn't crash too much for you after this. I see you made it on the ship okay, Vicar. I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. Yeah, uh... Head upstairs and claim a room. For what it's worth, it wasn't named by me. <laughs> Something you need? You gonna go pick a room, or... I guess she's I just in my there. party. I guess she's just in my party here, so it's fine. Alright, we got some repairs to do, I think, and then we also... I didn't explore the whole ship the last time I was here, so I think we need to, we need to do that, too. Aha! You had the best, now try the rest. Yep, it's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. John, thank you for resubscribing. 15 months, uh, what is that in prefix? Hold on, let me, let me try that. Because it's whatever that prefix is, chromatic, hang on. Uh, prefix for 15. Numer numeral prefix, yes, that's what I'm looking for. Uh -huh. Table of number prefixes, 15. It says quindec, quindecim. I'm just going to say quindichromatic. That should work good enough. Yeah, I'm going to have to look it up every time you resub. You're exactly right about that. <laughs> But thank you anyway. You are quindic quindichromatic now, so thank you very much. Appreciate it, John. Um, tinker with bits to increase the damage. Okay, that's interesting. I'll keep that in mind in a minute. Um, I have a bunch of weapon parts. I may as well just repair uh, repair all equipped. A hold to repair all equipped. Okay. Seventeen weapon parts and ten something that I didn't see what it was. So. Uh, armor? I don't... I actually think I'm just going to break these down, honestly. Break down. Break down some of these, anyway. What is that, like... What? Thing. What? Second one from the last... Second one from the last one. Up. This one? Toss ball blocker. What the shit? It's like a lacrosse stick, basically. At least you from my understanding. You just get a lacrosse stick as a weapon. What the fuck? It's great for bronzing, cleaving, and the occasional hacking. Only from Spacer's Choice. So... So we can break some stuff down. Uh, why do I have all this, these things just in, sitting in my inventory? I think I got some of the stuff for the vicar there. Um, so we'll work on that. I can't help but notice that you broke down my change of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he wouldn't be too happy with that. Uh, that could increase our damage. That could increase our damage. That could also increase our damage. Just trying to figure out if it's worthwhile to do so. Um, this, I think, would be worthwhile to do so. Because Parvati used that as part of her ability, so that's rather nice. Um, cost 50 bits? Sure. Watch me, like, find a better one soon or something. Well, it's level 3, so it's probably fairly decent for a little while anyway. Uh, this is level 6, so this is also fairly decent for a little while. Plus, my sneak attacks will benefit from that, so there we go. All right, I'm cool with that for now. So, do we have anything else here? So we have that. We this have. This cargo hold looks so empty without a Krogan talking shit about you in it. Oh my god. 
I'm not Mass Effect fan, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so this is the room I didn't want to go in before because it looked like it would kill me. But the ship's not trying to kill me actively at this point, so maybe passively. Install power regulate. Oh, okay. That's what we gotta do. Well, you right. kinda need to come in here anyway, don't you? Yes. This is for resets. Right? Yeah, this is for respec. Okay. I How about they just put the respec machine on your ship? I could do some hopping around over here. Just like hop around like I'm a crazy person. Parkour. That's what we're doing. I'm going to parkour to the respec machine. See? Oh, shit! Ow! <laughs> Congratulations, Captain. <laughs> You've broken your legs. Thank you, Ada. I didn't I didn't know. <laughs> Sealed. It's probably the Vicar's room. What else we got here? More rooms that are sealed. I would assume, then, that all of these are probably for crew members. Gourmet Saltuna. See any of the drawers? I think I might have already looted a few of the things in the drawers, honestly. So, and this is where this goes. What about this? Sealed. I should probably tell Ada about the power regulator. Maybe these doors will become unsealed once I get the power regulator in place. Okay, Adam, take it easy. We'll see you next time. Yeah, you have a good one, too. Now you know that you're the person to go to when you're taking a break from game dev life. By the way, you're in any game dev. Oh, nice. Nice there, Optical. Cool. I, uh, I appreciate you coming in uh, to take a break from the development stuff there. If you don't mind me asking, can you give us any little secrets into what you're developing? And unless it's under a need-to-know basis, if that's the case, it's fine. The town of Edgewater is now without power. I appreciate you doing your part to hasten their demise. Glad to be of service, Ada. Glad to be of service. <laughs> to the jump seems to be not loading anymore. Their really demise. All right, Conker, you take oh, it easy gosh, as well. She's like constantly angry, Edie. <laughs> I have a power regulator, Ada. Do you know how to install a power regulator? Put it in the slot? Sure. Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. And in the event that I don't know what to do, we have a couple of people here who might know, so... the cargo bay, up the ladders. Cool. Thank you, Ada. I'll be back. Level up! We're level six now. I don't know, uh... I don't know how many levels you get in this game, to be honest. Is this somebody's bed? It's my bed. You sleep in the cargo hold. Yep. I mean, it is the unreliable. Did you expect anything more? <laughs> not really. Please don't shoot the engine. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a good idea. I end up like that one episode of... Uh, oh, what the fuck was that space show that Mom and Dad were watching? Another Life, I think it was called, or something like that. I didn't really like that show all that much. It just seemed like it was creating tension for the purpose of creating tension rather than to help develop the characters. To be honest. Making a survival game and an open world 2D game if you want secrets, tell you. I mean, if you feel like sharing a few, you can. I don't mind. I like the conversation. So if you feel like sharing, then please, by all means. You have the floor. Okay, we've installed our regulator. Let's go tell Ada that we've installed our regulator. It kind of amazes me that just like this game. Say, oh, it's gonna hurt my legs again. But it kind of amazes me just how much inspiration this game is probably taking from stuff like Fallout and Mass Effect. But to be fair, it's also just better. Should be no in here. Well, that's arguable for Mass Effect. It depends on the. There was a gun in here all along, Jimmy. There was an assault rifle in here, and I didn't even get it. Oh well. Madman. Guess I didn't bother checking around. I didn't want to poke my fingers where they didn't belong before, but that's a you different story shit, altogether. You own the shit, Yeah, I, I do now, but I didn't before. Okay, I it's a long story. So I've installed the power regulator. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. Good. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low-altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Okay, um... Let me see if those doors are open now before you go into low orbit. Hold on. And we should probably level up while I'm at it. It's probably a good idea. Uh, Vicar, like I said, pick a place Vicar, because hopefully you might want to strap in. Still. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to strap in. 
while you're at it. <laughs> okay, these are still sealed. All right, we'll, we'll look into it later then. It's fine. Um, I'll level up and I'll hard save right in front of Ada, and then we'll go into low orbit and see what that does for me. Uh, let's see. So we can pick a perk this level, so that's good. Um, what do I want to level significantly this level? Got leadership's doing good. Dialogue is doing good because we put a lot of points into that one. And then uh, ranged is doing good because we had that there. So. Bigger lockpicks? No, I don't need bigger lockpicks. I'm good on the lockpicking. Lockpick skill gets me more bits. Uh, see what's inside lock containers. Lockpicking speed is increased. And then finding pristine item chance is increased. It's not incredible. I don't really need it that badly. Um, so I guess we'll just do what we did before. Where we put three points here. We'll put three points here. And then we'll put four points here. Once we get this to 40, we can actually do a little bit more in the other ones to force them to get up to 40 a little faster. So, but until then, we'll, we'll worry about it later. Uh, apply. Yes. And perks. I'm going to need to find a shop wherever the hell we're going to go after this, though, because I'm going to need to sell some stuff in my inventory. My limit's getting a little bit up there. Permanent pep in your step. If you press W-E-L-P, you will get healed. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, I guess I broke my legs again. W-E-L-P. And then my health comes back. Uh, vendor prices, ability fast travel when encumbered, I don't need to worry about that, tactical time dilation, recharge rate, carrying capacity, additional ammo stock on vendors, and consumable in general stock on vendors, base armor rating, you know, base armor rating might not be too bad, if I'm going to be wearing light armor the whole game, it might not be bad to have a little bit of extra armor, I don't know how much 5 armor is really going to make a difference though. This actually might be a better one to pick, Precision. Ah, uh, yes, making your companions concrete. It sounds good. It sounds like the kind of build that I... I mean, I'm going for a sort of uh, long-range support build, I guess, so... Where my partners are really helpful. So... And if this was a Bethesda title, I'd be SOL from the start, because the partners are not always very helpful in those games, but... This ain't a Bethesda title. Let's see if Obsidian knows what they're doing with partners. So, having never, you know, played an Obsidian game before this. So, it, uh, it will be interesting to see. All right, well, that takes care of that now. Let us fly. Ada, I am, hold on, just about ready to go. Let me do this first. We will irreversibly save over top of our... Well, actually, I still have my previous save from, like, directly before I started doing today's episode. So I guess I could go back if I really wanted to, but I don't, so... That sounds like a good idea, Ada. Let's see if uh, the ship can actually fly now that I have a power regulator. I don't think that those sparks are supposed to be coming out like that. <laughs> I'm the ship's been for a while. Yeah, that's also true. Parvati, Vicar, you might want to strap in. Off we go. Against all odds, the unreliable takes flight. They, they even made a poster for me. Nice. <laughs> oh, there's three types of armor. Okay. I think they showed that earlier, but I didn't really register it. So there's medium armor, apparently, as well. But light armor gives the highest bonuses, so... And then heavy armor makes you look like the Doom Marine. Yes, but also gives you Therefore, penalties for it. It gives you penalties for it that I don't particularly care for. Like minus in stealth, which is not good for me because I like to pew pew things with a plasma rifle from far away, so. From Dr. Phineas oh, I know that guy. Yeah, patch him through. Ah, there you are. Hail and hearty and captain of your own ship. Well, you know. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. About her former captain, horrible way to die. Yeah, he didn't really. Feeling, by the way, I know. lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any uh, unnatural drippage? Other than my own blood. Side effect of thawing. From I from being you. shot, you mean? Or. <laughs> Yeah. Also, I've been, slow down time. I've been feeling a little lightheaded. Also, I can slow down time. I mean, I guess I could tell him this, considering he's the one that put the pump me full of the drugs that are probably causing the 
change in my ability to my capacity to perceive time. Oh, that yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it though. I'm sure you're fine. <laughs> okay then. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. Uh huh. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. See, when you keep saying help me, help us, it makes it sound like you're planning like a big coup or something. Gladys Coakley. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Okay. So we gotta go have a word with Gladys. Why do I need a nav key to land on a planet? What about the black market? Put a couple light years we mean Halcyon. <laughs> Somewhere outside Stellar Bay. So so we're we're going to the black market here. This this is more like it. This is what I signed up for when I put my my uh, spacer's choice travel application in. <laughs> Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. There are credentials for smugglers. Monarch, it's her. I would think that's the sort of thing that you wouldn't. <laughs> I don't like the idea. Where, well, I already am technically a war criminal, considering I just condemned a bunch of people to die. So I don't think I really, you know. If you find all the Easter eggs, you'll be jump scared by a screen that says "Good job." <laughs> nice. That sounds like a pretty good, uh, pretty good little Easter egg. Just "Good job" right across the screen, like freaking, I don't know, like teeth and blood dripping from its mouth or something. Just make the "Good job" like anthropomorphize "Good job" or something, and just make it like look like it's ready to eat you or something. That'd be pretty cool. Um. Stop me from just leaving Halcyon altogether. Probably Phineas and Ada. So <laughs> I'm okay. No, I mean I'm just I'm just throwing ideas out there. Don't you don't have to do them. I'm just saying. Might make the jump scare more jump scare e. I don't know. Uh, why do I need a nav key to land on the planet? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Yeah, my kind of place. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. Oh, okay. So that's how it's going to keep me off of all the other places. For Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys called Kelly. Okay. So I'll go have a word with Gladys about that whole thing. All right. Somewhere outside Stellar Bay. Probably not, but he'll probably tell me why that's true. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia. And, in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. In theory. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures, more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. I think I like the first you option have better. You a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. <laughs> Trust me. Talk to Gladys called Kelly. All right, fair enough. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. Okay, cool. This game seems By like it's way, giving you I options of like the two types of D and D right parties: the ones that try to stick with the story and role play to the best of their abilities, and the ones that are just murder hobos and want to do all the stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> Not because they hate their characters, but because they want to torment the DM with their first set of characters. Hmm. I.e. our group's the end. The holographic shroud. What does that actually do? Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. Oh, okay. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Cool. So I guess I'm your guinea pig. I mean, that's fair. I already was. This is biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Cool. Uh, there's limitations on it, though, you said. I should probably be privy to those. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Aha! Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can sneak past, for example. Okay. 
Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Damn it. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. Okay, fair enough. Can I just steal a uniform or something? <laughs> I mean, I guess that's another fair question. <laughs> a change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy cereal? I mean... What inattentive and brainless god would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? <laughs> Wait till later in the game we'll find one person that we have to do that with. Not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. Oh, okay. Modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Well, I didn't need that last one, but... How the hell does a hologram... Yeah, that's a good question, actually. I I know I'm getting off off the point here, but I would like to... I would like to see... Would you exordalygus? Disclaimer, you will know what this means when you play the survival game. Ah, okay, gotcha. I don't know what it means at this point. As far as I know at this point, it's just gobbledygook to me, so... Gobbledygook. But if, if once your survival game is out on the market, maybe we'll find out. How, yeah, how does a hologram sweeten your breath? Science, that's how. You know what? That's fair. I'll put it to good use. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me. You're gonna me in shake the mic stand. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Mm-hmm. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Okay. Thank you, Ada. I will do that in a moment. I need to go speak with my crew first. So, navigation terminal is over there. Is it named Gladys? Is that what that said? The unreliable navigation terminal. <laughs> oh, this game is funny. Somebody upstairs that wants to speak to me, apparently. So let's go have a look. Oh, that's the shroud. Never mind. Holographic shroud. Put your gun away! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, holographic shroud. The holographic shroud projects a disguise on you and your companions that gives you access to restricted areas, provided you have the correct ID cartridge for that area. So I need to find ID cartridges. Got it. Restricted areas are off limits to unauthorized personnel so, and otherwise result in being attacked on sight. Have to use it sparingly and wisely. We're probably doomed. Uh, terminal. Messages for Alex. Logs. Exit. Messages for Alex. Unread messages, archive messages, sent messages. These might help me with understanding who Alex was before he got flattened. Unread message list from you, Bedford. Okay. Udom, Wingman's Wingman, Bedford. R.E. Thank you. Forgot to mention my previous message. Silly me. I'm mailing you a copy of my favorite serial, The Space Adventures of Singularity Steel. It's about a dashing space pirate with a heart of, well, steel. It's not exactly board proved, so don't go showing it around to your spacer buddies. Hope it will amuse you when you're not out when you're out adventuring. Are there any similarities to a certain someone? Are entirely intentional. So he has a friend that writes fan fiction. That's just great. Uh, messages archived. Okay, we don't need to read any of those. <laughs> I already know. I already know the kind of guy that guy is anyway. So sent messages to Bedford. Look, there's no call for shouting. My terminal was busted. Had a few too many and might have knocked it off the desk. You know how it is. Sometimes you just gotta cut loose. I'm not telling you where Wells is, so lay off. Buy me a drink and the last hope next time I'm in and I might forgive you. Okay, then. Logs. Log entries. Shrink ray? Hammer power black market leads. Okay. Sure. So, Captain's Note, SW001, Shrink Ray. Note to self, remember this later. No better. Ada, remind me weekly to check this log until I tell you to stop. Yes, I mean continually. No, Ada, not if I'm dead. Why would you even ask me that? <laughs> Back to my point. I saw, in actuality, with my own two eyes, a sublimely powerful weapon in Wells' lab. Just sitting there for the taking. If the gray hair were to look away to, or forget about it, maybe. Or if I had asked a smidgen more nicely. He called it a shrink ray, but wouldn't let me test that claim after I lost my temper. Said he was inspired to create the thing by the achievements of other scientists who dared to push the boundaries of human knowledge and decency loss. 
I had heard rumors of fantastical weapons like this one, weapons that push the boundaries of the mind and science is cutting edge, but I figured they were just stories, to be honest. Laying eyes on Wells' shrink ray firsthand is enough to make a fellow wonder if there's more to the rumors, more to be had. So this guy liked taking things that didn't belong to him. Got it. Hammer power. The last time I got sl sloshed, I think. Yeah, I mean, I was imbibing at the last hope on the groundbreaker. Look, Udom was really free with the drinks. He seems like an okay fellow. Soon he would find out that's not true. I shamelessly but subtly eavesdropped on two Mardits yammering on about mad scientists some years back who claimed he'd made a huge discovery that would change the fate of the colony. Oh, excuse me. Like, none of us have heard that one before. But here's the good part. The Mardits said that the mad scientists kept yelling about the hammer's power or something similar. A strange weapon with a special power created by a crazy lab coat sure fits the bill. Could be another one of the weapons that inspired Wells. Okay, interesting. Black market leads. Why? Why? Why won't Wells just give the shrink ray to me? Blast him to the depths of the labyrinth on Tartarus and back. Let the record show I did apologize for shouting him down five times. But the architect be damned. It's just sitting there, neglected and gathering dust. I should have commandeered it and thanked him without asking permission or uh, breaking expensive equipment when he said it wasn't ready yet and that even if it were, he couldn't trust someone like me. What does that even mean, I ask? Is that I'm not trustworthy enough? That I'd use it to wipe out the good, hard-working folks of the colony like some sort of moralist psycho? I'll admit to maintaining some questionable associations, but I follow a strict code for me, myself, and mine. What's not to respect in that? Exactly. Now I have to wait until Wells forgets or thinks he's misplaced it. In the meanwhile, I've been tracking down additional rumors pertaining to the others of these science weapons throughout Halcyon. If gossip holds true, my next step will be to check with the black market merchants on the Groundbreaker and in Fallbrook. Okay, so while we're in, uh, uh excuse me, while we're on the Groundbreaker, we gotta look into those sciency weapons. Got it. Is this my bin? This is my storage bin. Okay. In case I need to store anything. In case I want to store anything. There's a large number of things that I don't really care to store. I guess I'm just going to break them down or sell them at this point, honestly. I do want to see if I can equip... Uh, is this a bed? That is a bed, yes. Kind of a crap room, if I'm being honest. It's got a nice view, though. It's just like it a... It does. Uh, captain's quarters. It even has houseplant. Well, that's nice. Examine. So like the spores of the puffball cast in the wind and alighting on the fresh soil, we put down new roots, Adelaide. Oh, okay. So for helping her, I got houseplant. Good. All is right with the world. Good. You have your wife, though. Yes, I, need, I, needed, I needed houseplant to be here in order for me to have moral support. So all is right what with the, the fuck? world. Hello. What in the hell are you? There's no response from the automechanical unit. A serial number etched into its chassis includes the letters Sam. Leave it alone. Sam, huh? Sam, Ada, why do I have a mech suit in my ship? Cigarette If I take Sam's stuff, is he going to kill me? No. Can you imagine if he just woke up lens flared eyes and then <laughs> shot you? <laughs> I wonder what he's going to say if he wakes up and he's like, my bin of stuff is gone. And I'll be like, why did you need a cigarette lighter? <laughs> Like, that seems like a silly thing. Okay, what's with all this stuff here? What's with the plant? This is not a petunia. Petunia the plant. Uh-huh. Modern steel wrench and you. This book is heavily de-geared uh, de with doodles in the margins. This, must, this might be Parvati's room, actually. Photo, yep, this is Parvati's room. Stern older man with warm eyes. That's Parvati's father. All right. Interesting. Oh, here's the vicar's room. Got it. Uh, this it looks like nobody's room for right now. Four, five. So Parvati has a room. We've got one, two, three, four, five rooms, and then whatever this guy's all about. So that's five potential partners. I've got two. Got it. What we got here? Index of banned literature. Part one, various qualifying considerations. Part two, principal rules of restrictive management. Part three, morals and maxims of banning unethical literature. Part four, proof of the grand architect and predestination or repudiation of the titles listed here within. Part five, consequences of the mind and the will of man when led astray. 
Part 6, official list of banned titles. Part 7, prerequisites for advancing the investigation, outing, and penalizing of offenders. This man wants to start his own cult. I think he did. He's trying. What, what do you have here? Tossball trading cards. In mint condition, most of these cards represent players from the Hephaestus Hammers and the Tile Backers. Tile Backers. So you like trading I'm cards, so huh? Marveling at the complex simplicity of the Fibonacci spiral. I'm sure you know what that's like. The Fimina what now? Something vexing you, Captain? Yeah, not terribly. Just, yeah, trying to get a read on the crew here. All right, Optical. Sounds good. We'll see you in a minute. Uh, I'd like to know something about who I'm flying with. Tell me again the book we picked up that's in French. Thoughts on the philosophists. Any idea where I can find someone who speaks French in this colony? My crew wants you off the ship? No, we're not going to do that. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run of the mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. You don't say. Violently enthusiastic. That's somewhat concerning. No, I mean, if we're going to be murdering our way across the colony, I'd need someone with violently enthusiastic dispositions, so... Uh, that's what my parents called it. Really? <laughs> I was in a pit of a town, much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with the need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. Yeah, seems like a common story. Even even having been in suspended animation for 70 years, it's still a common story. So, were they not religious? On the contrary. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure Excuse faith. Me. A faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. Uh huh. So they weren't proud of you when you became a vicar, then. They thought I was fighting the plan. Should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige, but that was not me. Hmm. Uh, re re enlighten me about this plan, just so we have some background knowledge. The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the okay, by cool. layman's terms. The Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? And I'm sure you could go on and on about it. These questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. See, I automatically disagree about the whole thing because you're, you're, you're content to just be content. You're not content with trying to push the envelope a little bit. All right, man. Well, we're going to be pushing the envelope here, so I don't know if that's going to clash with your faith or what, but uh, can't help but follow the plan and everything you do is part of it. That sounds about right for the way that the religion works. The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go... The more you're straying from the it's path. It's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. So it's like karma, then, basically. Okay, that's a lot of options. Holy hell. Um, trusting you to sign on without knowing anything about... I mean, that's a fair point. Yeah, we should try to, you know, butt heads a little bit here so we can figure out where we each stand. I know where you stand for your religious stuff, but you don't know much about me. I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope. And you were my only hope of getting it translated. Let's hope I keep my end of the bargain, then. <laughs> Look, the book doesn't have the answers you're looking for. I don't know if he's ready for that kind of an existential crisis. Welcome back, Optical. Um, I, mean, I guess it makes sense, considering his, his worldview. What about you? What's your story? Seeker and lover of great renown. Well, if I didn't want to talk about it, I wouldn't have asked him about it. 
Uh, I can be. I think I can be fair and partial with these people. I can tell them about being a colonist. And how did he do that? Um. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm already being fair, so I'll just tell them the whole thing. Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Uh, go on an adventure. Yeah, helping him recover the chemicals to save the rest of the colonists. That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Because it's... Family and hope, friends are in the hope, just because it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I was honestly, I was just going to say, I mean, I'm one person in a mass of many, but, like, there's people there that probably want the things that I have now. Once they're all free, we can all go on fancy space-time adventures, and not having that freedom is something that I wouldn't wish on anybody, so. A commendable attitude. Well, I'm glad that you uh, <laughs> agree, I guess. Uh... I think I know what his thoughts on the philosophists were. He doesn't like them particularly. But um, tell me about the book again. Okonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the philosophist school of thought. So the book is banned in this colony. Right. Um, and your thoughts on the philosophists were that they weren't very good, right? Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. All right. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. Okay, so it wasn't his fault, then. That's so you're trying to decipher it so that you could see where the perversion happened. Okay. Uh, any idea where we can find someone who speaks French? I've been thinking on that. There's a former associate, uh, infamous philosopher, scholar. A former associate, huh? Some years ago, he's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. Didn't you say that that guy was a prisoner before? <laughs> Only one guy in this whole colony that can translate French. <laughs> former what now? It does seem a little far-fetched. There's only one person that remembers French. The only one I'm aware of. I suppose we could always just ask random passers-by if they are fluent in it. Yeah, that does seem a little inefficient now that you say it out loud, doesn't it? <laughs> only I get to be a smartass. No, it's fine. Point taken. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. Did anybody think before naming these All places? <laughs> access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. Oh, okay. So there's a data to cartridge we can get. Got it. self distracting your scholar friend. So Vicar happens to be such a highly skilled hacker. He did say it was part of his training, didn't he? Um, but we know a crew... Uh, wait, actually, a crew manifest, would it have a nav navigation directions in it or something? I don't know. I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophist's off-world destination. Okay. That makes sense. Th so you said this is part of your training, right? Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. <laughs> secular I skills, huh? Led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard toss ball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Just in case you wanted to ever break them out? <laughs> Alright, sure, we'll go get it. Thank you, Captain. No problem. Uh, do I have anything else to talk to you about? By verity, by strength. What are we contemplating today? I think I got everything. Personal quest of yours. I'll, I'll think about what we're contemplating. <laughs> I'm good for right now. Where's Parvati anyway? Is she just hanging out out here somewhere? Or is she hanging out in the in the thick of it with all the oh bathroom? Okay, fair enough. Hey, we even have a a, a handless or not a handless dryer. It's got a button on it, right? Yeah. Hands-free dryer, that's what I was going to say.
one of these days I'm just going to chalk it all up to my own hypochondriacness of me just pulling the gun out every single time. Do you want lighter clothes to work on that thing with? Sometimes I can hear Vickers saying prayers to himself. Sometimes I hear him cussing about toss ball scores. <laughs> Sounds about right. Time you move along. Break time's over. What does that mean? What is... I don't know what any of those... I, I don't know what I think it's time for you to move along Parvati means. I don't want to, like, accidentally kick her out of my crew. She's great. I can't get rid of her yet. I don't want to get rid of her, to be honest. I still want to know whose bed this is. <laughs> like, it seems like something that I would be able to do something about. Well, I'll figure it out later. It's not that big of a deal. Um... Any snappy input there, Ada? How can I be of assistance? Um, move for entertainment. Got a minute to talk. Like to learn more about the colony. Yeah, the auto mechanical in the janitor's closet. Is that just our our actual janitor, or? The unit is a cleaning sand. Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago. I'm sure with the intent to modify it, but I've never seen it up and running. Uh huh. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify Sam. Okay. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters, we may be able to determine what work remains in order for Sam to properly operate. Okay, maybe I just missed that in the logs before. All right, cool. Uh, let's learn more about the colony. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Let's see. If any sort of lab, the groundbreaker, Terra Two, Monarch. Let's talk about something else. I guess we'll just start at the top. Ah uh, yes. As Dr. Wells is a wanted outlaw, he built his laboratory into an asteroid. <laughs> Orbital destinations can be challenging to land on. His more so than most. I mean, yeah, it's an asteroid, so... I guess we could ask why is that. The outlaw scientist known as Dr. Phineas B. Wells has taken a measure of precautions to make the lab undetectable to those hunting him. Even knowing the location, my systems resist my orders to go where I instruct them. Oh, really? Huh. Think it has something to do with something he programmed? There is a bounty on his head. One with a markedly high reward amount. Shall I engage the laser weapon system? Uh, no, that, that won't. That won't be necessary. <laughs> a sensible choice, as we do not have any laser weapons. Oh, okay. Well, fair enough, then. <laughs> uh, ask us somewhere else. Sure. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Uh, how about the place we're going? We are clear to dock with the groundbreaker if that's your desired destination. Okay. If we're going there, please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardets take their docking laws quite seriously. I should probably look up the paperwork somewhere then. Uh, give me the spiel. The groundbreaker was Halcyon's original colony ship. It has since been repurposed as a service station in the Lagrange point of the system. Okay. Freighters often deliver or pick up goods from the Groundbreaker en route to other destinations. The city ship hosts an array of cargo bays, factories, housing sections, and more. So it's a big old, like, citadel, basically. spaces with station representatives in what is considered a truly neutral territory within the system. Good, good. If it's neutral, then we shouldn't be shot on sight when we go there. Yeah, you you mentioned that before. Is there any way that you could do that for me? I can, yes. Let me add that to my list of 1,435,498 tasks I am simultaneously executing in order to run our ship. I mean, hey man, you're you're the... <laughs> You're, you're the you're the AI here. You're the one who can do all those things simultaneously. You are more than welcome, Captain. <laughs> uh, ask about somewhere else. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Well, since it's going to take about 16 years for you to finish all of those processes uh, and get the everything filled out in triplicate, let's talk about the other places we can go. Where in Terra 2? Uh... Oh, okay, so Emerald Vale and Edgewater is Terra 2. Okay, gotcha. Edgewater is the sparkling county seat of Emerald Vale, or it was when first built. 
Since then, neglect and time have worn away her shiny veneer. Mm -hmm. The town is near the coordinates where Captain Hawthorne died. It would not be unfortunate if something, like say a plague, were to wipe Emerald Vale from the face of the planet. <laughs> Got some ideas there, huh? Um, what do you think of the townspeople? You mean the ones who did not answer my distress call with medical assistance, but instead came to issue my injured captain a parking ticket? Yeah, that's fair. I'm sure there are wonderful humans who don't deserve to be wiped out by starvation or a devastating plague. <laughs> I, I didn't know this AI could uh, hold a grudge. I don't know if she's just simulating a grudge, but I don't know. How are they faring since we left it in the dust? Since you diverted power to the deserters, the botanical lab is thriving. However, Emerald Vale's cannery shut down, leading to a total collapse of Edgewater's population. I don't know if that means death or... Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> I don't know if that means just they all died or if that means that... I mean, I guess there is vending machines there that I could go sell my crap to, but... Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Well, either way, we've got that information. What about this Monarch place? Where in Monarch? I don't know. Where not? Stellar Bay, Cascadia. Okay. Ah, Monarch. The armpit of the Halcyon system. Her last functioning port town is Stellar Bay. Well, that is, if you don't count sublight smugglers port in Falkbrook. Hmm. So, smugglers' ports, that's probably someplace we're going to need to go to. And uh, then we can ask why it's been blockaded. It's sublight run for the purpose of shipping contraband. And before you ask, I don't know the coordinates, so I can't talk us there. Damn it. I'll have to go get those then somewhere. <laughs> why are they being blockaded? I believe it has something to do with the planet being an uninhabitable wilderness and a lawless land with no corporate presence? That would make we sense, yes. to survey the residents in Stellar Bay for additional data points. Okay, I might go do that, actually. Um, somewhere else. Of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Let's discuss Warning. Monarch again, but let's discuss Cascadia this time. Warning. All colonists are urged to reconsider travel to Cascadia due to infestation of mantasaurs and risk of indefinite detention or death. Well, damn. That's not good. That does sound dangerous. <laughs> this is one of those times where you say one word but really mean another, isn't it? I suppose you would find an environment like this fun. I mean, it'll be fun if I have the weapons to kill the things down there. Have you ever gone dinosaur wrangling, Ada? Nobody's gone dinosaur wrangling. That's my point. <laughs> Uh, mantisaurs. Oh boy, those sound like they'd be trouble. But still, if we're gonna be, you know, blazing a trail here, uh, does anybody live in Ca Actually, yeah, what's the local report first? The local report is that you will very likely die if you leave Cascadia's landing pad. Fair enough. Uh, does anybody live there besides the marauders? No people aside from marauders in Cascadia. There is only death. <laughs> Great. That's fantastic. Uh, let's talk about something else. How can I be of assistance? What else we got? Mood for some entertainment. Got a minute to talk. In between all the other processes, I don't know if she's got a minute to talk. I'll leave her be. Thank you. I request you do not wake me if I am sleeping upon your return. Oh, sure. It might be a little while. <laughs> all right, navigation terminal. What do we got here? Oh, wow. Well, there's Phineas's lab, but we can't... It said we can't fast travel there. We've got Terra 2. The Groundbreaker, which is our next destination. We've got Olympus, Monarch, Tartarus. Eridanos, Scylla. Typhon, and Hephaestus. Got it. Let's read up on these before we go anywhere. AG332, Terra 2. An idyllic terrestrial planet. Halcyon's wealthiest elite live in its capital city, Byzantium, while the colony's laborers live in corporate-owned townships along the frontier. I would assume we're probably not going to see Byzantium for some time. Phineas's Lab, an abandoned asteroid facility located in the Rings of Terra II, repurposed into the experimental laboratory, living quarters, and hideout of Phineas Vernon Wells. The Groundbreaker, independent orbital station in the remains of Halcyon's first colony ship, captained by Junlei Tennyson and run by the descendants of the original crew. So they've all been living there for a while, huh? That seems like a... Uh, it could be a bit of a problem. Uh, Typhon. 
AG 642 Typhon. An uninhabitable icy planetoid. Excuse me. Ugh. At the edge of the Halcyon system. Typhon has nothing to offer the Halcyon colony. Okay, fair enough. Hephaestus. AG 534 Hephaestus. The closest planet to the sun, the Hephaestus mining colony, was first to establish outposts here. And as such, it has claimed the planet for itself. Okay. I think they're a faction, if I remember right. There's something right here, but we can't get to it just yet, so... Olympus, largest Halcyon's two Jovian gas giants. Perpetual storms rack the planet's atmosphere, rendering it uninhabitable. Oh boy. Monarch, AG 111 Alpha. Monarch, one of the Olympus's many satellites. What should have been Halcyon's second habitable world has long since been abandoned by the board due to monstrous, ravenous creatures. So that's the place where Cascadia is. Tartarus, AG 434 Tartarus. Named after its hellish atmosphere, Tartarus is where the board maintains the maximum security penal complex known as the Labyrinth. Note self, don't go there. AG211, Eridanos, Halcyon's second Jovian gas giant. Its atmosphere is rich with hydrogen, helium, and various noble gases. Distillation plants in the atmosphere harvest these gases for energy. And last but not least, Scylla. Scylla is one of the largest asteroids orbiting Halcyon, the largest in a grouping of rocks known as the Charybdis Cluster. Hephaestus Mining once claimed the asteroid, but its prospecting site was abandoned decades ago. Well, we can go to Scylla, it looks like. It's lit up. We can also go to Monarch, apparently, but I don't think I want to fast travel to any place that's not lit up as a go-here thing. Uh, let me go back and see if there's anything else I've got there. Welcome to the system map. That's the system. Points of interest may be discovered. Player shipped any location you've unlocked. Some landing base requires special codes or keys. That's good. Extreme dangerous. No employees are encouraged to remain home or at work. <laughs> oh, boy. So do I have quests that will take me to any of those other planets? Is that why they're there? Weapons from the Void. Science weapon. Kindred spirits. The Empty Man. Okay, to security terminal and the Groundbreaker. Search Hawthorne's ter I should go search Hawthorne's terminal before I go anywhere else here. That's an Edgewater. That's uh, on the Groundbreaker, so we'll do that in a minute. Passage to Anywhere. Speak to Gladys on the ground. Oh, okay. Gladys isn't my the name of my... Uh, my navigation, it's the name of the lady that... Yeah, I, I should know that, shouldn't I? That Gladys is the name of the lady that we need to go meet with our, our confidant. On Phineas's behalf, because... I should know that because it just they just talked about it five minutes ago, but apparently I'm blanking on that. All right, use terminal. Um, ch 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 Search term Sam. Okay. Search results Sam. First Sam result, second Sam result, third Sam result. Experimental note OI-695, do not forget. You found a discarded sanitation and maintenance automechanical in Emerald Vale scrap heap during your last job. It should not be too difficult to get it up and running. With a few key modifications, I can envision a combat-capable variant. Some might say a clean, mean killing machine? Should be fun. I don't know, sometimes I like the way this guy thinks, and sometimes I think he's just trying to set the world on fire. Thank you, Optical, I appreciate that. Second SAM result. OI-696. Removal of factory standard plot part Suds Steeper was successful. Delivery of combat modified replacement part Acid Steeper has been delayed. Progress setback is estimated now to be a solid three months. Not like I have more pressing matters to attend to. Ah, but I do. Third SAM result. OI-697. Okay, I got some experience. Good. I'm giving up hope on the delivery. The part is lost in transit, and it's not turning up anytime soon. But, good news! I heard from a fellow who knows a gal who knows the broker who overcharged me for the information regarding the location of the, an acid steeper I can uh, filch. The part was sent to an old storage facility in Roseway. I sure never thought I'd go back to that pit. Good thing Auntie abandoned it years ago. I'll pick it up following this next pit stop back to Emerald Vale. Wells wants me to chaperone some person of interest. Details to come. So this is what he was working on before he left. Okay. So we need to go and commandeer this acid thing. Uh, huh. Can I show it on my map, please? Well, here's Vicar Max. I... So he has a shotgun and a telescoping staff. He said he's good with a toss ball thing. I kind of want to see what his stats look like, though, before I go from here. What's he got here? He has... Um... Oh. <laughs> Ability trick shot, that sounds interesting. He can also pick a perk, right? Yeah. 
So what's he got over here? 10 hack. Dialogue combat effect duration. That sounds good, especially for somebody like me who's using those. And science weapon damage. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, sure. We'll go with that. That works. Uh, what's the tier 4 and 5 stuff? So, let's see. Increase damage up by his companion for a short time performing their companion ability. Oh, interesting. Harmful status effect duration down and reset ability to cool down on kill. That's not bad. Explicit so, companion ability. Stand your ground through armor rating for 10 seconds. When his companion takes damage, they gain armor for a short time. It stacks up to 3 times. That's not bad either. Uh, down during combat, they heal back some health and continue fighting. This effect has a long cooldown. 15 minutes. Holy crap. Probably good on the high levels, though. So, alright. So, we'll apply that there. And we need to get you some better armor there, my friend. Uh, you have a shotgun and a two-handed melee weapon, so you're probably better off with heavy armor, but I don't think I have any at the moment. Pyramid Ballistics. Worker's Outfit. Well, this is nice for the one-handed melee. If I'm going to give him like a telescoping staff, it might be good. Um, having him look exactly like me might not be the best idea, so we're gonna we'll go with this instead. And I'm gonna give him a one-handed melee weapon since uh, I think Parvati's already got a two. So let's equip that there. He said he likes toss ball, so let's give him a toss ball blocker. <laughs> it seems sensible enough to me, I think. Uh, this has does this have a mod on it? just deals energy damage. Okay, interesting. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with all these things. I think once I um, once I call it a day for this stream, that's what I'm going to um, that's what I'm going to worry about. Uh, like, organizing my inventory and all that other stuff. So. Alright, let me see here. Weapons from the Void, the Empty Man. This is the one with the security terminal. Yep. Passage to anywhere. I gotta go to the groundbreaker anyway. I'd like to see what uh, where this cleaning machine thing sends me. It could send me directly back to uh, Sentry Saber. Okay, I guess I'll take it. I can break it down for some parts. Um. So where does this one send me? That's what I want to know. And then once I know that, then I can know where to go. This sends me. Nowhere, because it doesn't have a marker. Okay. Beta's out in your game, would I like a copy? Um, I can't guarantee that I would be able to play it for the stream. I have a set schedule that I play for the stream. Um, it is listed in... If you go below the stream feed there to stream suggestions, you can see what my current schedule is for the stream. And I play those fairly rigidly. I usually don't stop to play something else. So, I would. I mean, I don't want you to be just given a co given copies out. Um, you, I mean, you can always once the game. I would rather play it once the game comes out, um, so I can actually give money to the developer who deserves it. Um, so once the game comes out, you could always leave a suggestion because um, it's, it's it's also a suggestions list, the stream suggestions list down there that I just talked about. Um, you could always leave it as a suggestion for me to play once the game is fully developed. And then if it gets chosen to be played, I will give it a shot. So that's that's just how I feel. I, I would rather I would rather give money once it's completed so that um, I can I can, you know, show appreciation for the work that you guys have done. That's just how I feel. So Okay, I don't know where this Sam thing is. Why are you looking at me like that? Don't look at me like that. It makes me feel self-conscious. <laughs> Alright, let's just go to the Groundbreaker. It's probably fine. Uh, docking base. Sure. Off we go. Destination reached. The Groundbreaker. Aha! Nice. Thank you, Ada. Alright, people, suit up. We're getting ready to go. Hey, Oh, sure. What's up, our buddy? Hey, Captain. 
I heard that Groundbreakers got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? Uh huh. What about her? Yeah, what about her? I was thinking that maybe I bought a meter. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I probably do. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. I don't know that how partial I am to Borston beans, especially after I, considering I know where it comes from now, but. So to keep this boat in good repair, I'm going to leave my crew and join hers. You know what, sure, we'll head over. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Alright, fair enough. Did you want to talk about something else? Do you have anything else to talk about? Mm, I still don't know what this option says. It's rather vague. Break time's over. Alright, so, we gotta go out. Everybody ready for decontamination? Thanks, Ada. Off we go. Oh, party selection. Okay, so I can just pick them now. Okay, interesting. So we've got oh, Parvati and the Vicar. We, we we all look like we're ready for the whole Spacer's Choice thing because we've all got just the same outfits on, basically. Just the light and heavy versions. Yes, but do I need melee weapon skills game? Especially when I have partners that can do that for me. That's the question. Put your gun away. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't be that crazy about it. Hello there. Just checking your ship's manifest. Standard procedure. Welcome to Groundbreaker, by the by. Thank you. I'll smells like grease and unwashed bodies. Just as I remembered. <laughs> Great. I'll try to remember not to rip my gun out at the slightest sign of anybody talking to me. That's not the point. The attack was just not that one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. Hmm. No witnesses? He's not even denying. Oh, boy. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. Interesting. So you have the same similar armor to what I have, I think. What the hell's going on there, friend? Going for a stroll around the docking base? You could say that. So you were in an argument, huh? Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. <laughs> So you, so you got a you got a pension for putting the the institutions against themselves, huh? Uh, I heard you knock someone out with a toss ball stick, yeah. The guy insulted my Rizzo's Rangers, all right? You can't just insult my Rangers and expect to get away with it. So he's got a short fuse. So of uh -huh. course I decked him with a toss ball stick. I mean, what am I? Some kind of fair weather fan? I don't know you. Hold on. Yeah, what what did you do exactly? The guy never liked me. Always trying to get a rise out of me. But I keep my chin up, right? Be the bigger man, I tell myself. Right. He's a spacer's chosen man, though. So when the chosen beat my rangers the other night, my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasts. Oh, he's your foreman? Oh my god. Yeah, oh boy. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky high foreman, and I'm just a back bay's dog worker. Well, former dog worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. Yikes. So, uh, got any plans for the future besides potentially spending some time in a jail cell? Enjoy my freedom. Scrounge together enough bits for a zero G. Other than that, can't say as I do. Uh huh. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? It, yeah, actually it is. I'm the captain of the unreliable. Captain of the unreliable. You're like something out of a serial drama. <laughs> you could say that. Hey, I don't want to talk your ears off, guessing you got places to be. I appreciate your time. Uh, okay, so I can't tell him this first option because that 
tells him my actual name instead of Captain Alex Hawthorne. Where are you going? Uh, not at all. Just, uh, you know, gonna figure out what to do next. Uh huh. See you around, boss. Alright, fair enough. Not your boss yet, but... I'm getting the feeling that's what they're trying to tell me. They're trying to tell me something. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're doing your job, then, for, for what it's worth. Customs, okay. So definitely gotta go there. Here's the corporate guy. Oh, okay, Th I thought that was his name. It's just a bunch of random people. Got it. I don't think all of that stuff is mine, but I guess they're just inspecting it all. Damn, those bypass shunts would be nice to have. Ooh, examine. Wanted. Phineas V. Wells. For various crimes and violations of board policy, including any or all of the following. Sedition, forgery, conspiracy, conspiracy to commit conspiracy, unlicensed medical practice, destruction of board property. Some of those seem more... That's quite the impressive list of infractions. Yeah, some of them sound more difficult to prove than others, I'll be honest. Oh, a vending machine. Where? Oh, over there. Okay, cool. I can buy and sell some stuff. Cool. Macrid. Wanted, dead or alive. Gunnar Macrid. For several counts of public intoxication, destruction of groundbreaker property, unpaid docking fees, and resisting arrest. Contract Commandant Sitnita. Is that what that says? I think so. If you have any information concerning Macrid's whereabouts, failure to report a tip may result in imprisonment and a fine. Proof of kill required to collect reward. Uh huh. There's the Phineas Wells one again. All right. Interesting. Right this way. Yep, I'll be there with you in a minute. I got a few things to sell. Sir, why are you shoving items inside of that vending machine? Well, it it, it takes the items from me. What can I say? <laughs> what does this thing have anyway? I got to remember also that uh, what's his face has a shotgun and. Um, there's the sawed-off shotgun. And a, uh, what's it called? Backpack increases carrying capacity. He has a shotgun and a melee weapon, so. Impact hammer, knockdown. I mean, I'm kind of okay with him having that toss ball stick, so. Why are these worse than the ones that I could get before? I wonder. Well, we still can't get a better shotgun just yet. I would imagine it's because it's level three. So. Um, let me see here. I can actually do this to sort of. Uh, so that's 40, so that's not too bad. Um, I don't want to sell any of that stuff. Any of these worth it? More than a few bolts at a time, basically. I mean, that's worth 22, I guess. Is that better than what I have? Oh, I can't compare it to what I just have on. Okay. Man, I have a lot of stuff here. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to look into like selling some of this stuff. To be honest, I, I'm going to... I'll look into it later, though. I don't think I'm going to look into it just now. I'll look into it once we, uh, once I do it. I'll do it off-screen, basically. And I still have some junk that can be sold, so that's good. I'll sell that off. Awesome. All right. And this vendor has Halcyon stuff, which is probably a little different. Level 10. Oh, that's pretty good. Officer Spine, Shock Cannon, it's a heavy weapon, okay, Hatchet, Grenade Launcher, oh my god, Revolver, 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 uh, Assault Rifle, which is what I have, and then there's some ammo, okay, what else they got, Adreno, some weapon mods, Restricted Stock, that it changes damage to corrosion. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Uh, bypass shunt mag picks. 
guess they wouldn't want you just picking the locks on the vending machines now, would they? That would explain why they aren't selling them all that well. Corporal, hello. Identification, please. Yes, sir. I have the ID right here. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Well, let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. Uh oh. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. Well, that's no good. We've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Oh, come on, guys. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> this isn't the end of the world. Probably. Probably. Okay, so how do I get this resolved? I take it back. I'm not Hawthorne. That isn't my ship. <laughs> You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford, our board representative here on Groundbreaker. Oh, God. The fan fiction writer guy? The wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. Can't miss it. Okay. Uh, got any idea why this happened? Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. I mean, that's probably pretty smart. <laughs> but what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. Uh -huh. If I can take a guess as to why, you must have riled up someone important. I sure hope it wasn't because I just practically killed the people of Edgewater. Yeah, run! <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll go talk to him, straighten this out. You take the starch out of him, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. Uh, don't, don't, oh, uh, don't say that too loud. I might hold you to it. A favor? Sure. What's up? Wanda Dorset over in Sick Bay. Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. <laughs> uh, what's her shipment? A handful of sand cleaning units retrofitted for surgery. Uh-huh. I stopped listening when she started yelling. I wonder if one of them has a corrosion unit on it that I might be able to commandeer? Yeah, before they blow up your ship, yeah. <laughs> I I think we're going to have to at some point here, but I I think I don't think we can get back into the ship now, or, well, I can check. I'll see what Much I can do. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? Someone named Gladys? I don't know if I should be telling a corporal who's above board about that. You can tell me about Ludam. Tension between the board and Groundbreaker. I'll ask this, then this, and then we'll leave. He's friendly enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Uh huh. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. Ah, right. Well, that makes sense then. Seems <laughs> like he's a fun guy. The board runs pretty much everything around here, though, right? Yep. Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Mm -hmm. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing base. I haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. I wonder why that is. So there's tension then. They can't abide an independent township, especially not one they got to depend on. We're the first and last stop out of this colony. Right. All their interstellar freighters come through us. And we skim a few bits off the top and manifest processing fees with every one. Folks around here will bluster that the board hates our freedom, but really, they know we can stop their out-system shipments anytime we like, and that terrifies them. Well, it would. I mean, they're the biggest company all over the place, so... I keep pushing them. It does sound like a complicated situation. Can make the board fix it? I don't know if they could. Hmm... I don't know what I, I think sounds complicated seems like a thing here, but I think that's a hurry to the end of the conversation thing, and I don't know if I want to take that. So let's see if this one works. You mean the heat? Sure, we can make them fix it. But what would they do in retaliation? Hmm. They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. So they could probably if we push them too hard. Maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces. <laughs> or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. Yeah, that's fair. The board wouldn't do that. Would they? I think they would, Parvati. The board is necessary to provide order to the colony. They believe it's their prerogative to overrun you. But whether you allow that is up to you. I don't know how I feel about the vicar's thoughts on these right. things. So far, anyway. And again, I don't exactly believe in his plan, so... Sure thing. 
I'm looking for a drink. Any recommendation? Actually, looking for a drink might be a good idea because that might lead me to Gladys. So. Most places are on the promenade deck. Big door yonder, straight through security. There's a bar on the starboard side. I cool. got a preference for the Lost Hope myself. Talk to Vera. She'll set you right. Awesome. Thank you. You need anything else? You let me know. Don't want anyone saying Groundbreaker is not the most hospitable port in the colony. Isn't it like one of the only ports in the colony, though? I'll be honest. Be seeing you. All right. Well, that takes care of that. So, again, guessing that we can't just go back to our ship now that they've impounded it. I would assume we're stuck here for a little while. Which I, mean, I guess is fine. I just we'll just have to get a feeling for this this place. That's all. Hey there, you mind stepping back? This charming little ship's been impounded, and I'm afraid I can't let you near it till it's not. All right, fair enough. Hmm. Don't you touch my ship to seem hot in here to you? That seems like a weird, sketchy thing to say to somebody who's probably about seventeen years old. Can you help me get this cleared up? I'd surely love to. But that's just not my bailiwick. You'll want to have words with our representative here from the board, Mr. Udom Bedford. His office is on the promenade. Yeah, killer. <laughs> I don't know if that seems like a good idea. All right, I'm going to go see if I can take care of this whole thing. The only person I imagine ever getting killed in this scenario would be Udom if he decides to be a complete dick about this whole thing. Like, I'm trying to be reasonable here, man. I'm trying to be reasonable, and here you are impounding my ship. Oh, you're just a Mardit. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Just you're, you're standing there like Felix was, and I'm figuring, oh, he's probably, you know, he had something to do with this, so maybe you do too, or maybe you're just standing against the wall. It's all possibility. Private Commandant. Quest ejector requires you enter a restricted area. If caught inside, you'll be shot on sight. Using disguise will prevent immediate hostilities. He almost slipped there. Alright, so where exactly are we going with your thing here? <laughs> Let's see. Just provide it to the thing. Locate a security terminal. That's what we're looking for. So that is whoop, one of these two. Okay, I would imagine then that Oh, security. So I just need to go in there. Got it. All right. Well, we'll figure that out in a minute. I picked up this weird signal the other day. It was coming from Monarch. Here we go again. No one lives on Monarch. It's a wasteland. You were hearing things. Uh, let's see. We repaired everything, right? Yeah, I repaired everything already. Okay. Got it. No, seriously. There was a lot of static at first, but then this voice said his name was Graham? Graham, right. Broadcasting on a dead world full of monsters. Now I've heard everything. <laughs> you know, it takes more muscles to frown than to smile. Who told you that? Graham? <laughs> Asshole. That's pretty funny. Uh, okay, so we need to use the shroud thing. How in the world do I do that? Let me see. Oh, not there. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, how do I, how do I use it though? That's my question. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk to these people if I could. Hi. Hi there. Haven't seen you around before. Yeah, first time. What can Groundbreaker Security do for you today? Uh, yeah, just getting my bearings, I guess. This is the security desk, sir. If you're here to report a crime, you'll want to talk to Commandant Sonita. I'm not authorized to take incident reports anymore. <laughs> I get the feeling there's a story there. 
tours or something, sees contraband from all over the place. I'm not really all that interested in this person's... How did you guys get back there? Parvati... <laughs> How did you just walk in there willy-nilly? I, I, I was assuming you have to shoot on sight there. But. Posting. I must kindly ask you to clear out. The Mardet's offices aren't for leisure time nor loitering. All right, fair enough. I can clear up. And the cred bounty? Yeah, I'm not that interested. ID cartridge? Mardet ID cartridge. As long as nobody else is using it. Found an ID cartridge to use the holographic shroud. You will now be automatically disguised when entering an associated restricted area. Oh, so that's how it works. Okay. So now if I enter in a restricted area, I'll have the cartridge. Okay, got it. So you're telling me I have to go in there. All right. see here before we do that this is this is a big place there are also six floors to go through this is gonna take a while oh boy um all right fair enough let's see here I don't want to go do too much here because we're kind of almost coming up on time here so I don't really want to go doing crazy amount of these are just takeable? All right. If you're not going to use them, Bard. Okay. Oh. Uh, sorry, are these the sleeping quarters? We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. The board would like to remind spacers and other travelers that passage to Monarch is restricted for your protection. Uh-huh. Canyons of acid and sulfur rain are the least of the horrors plaguing the surface of Monarch. I get the feeling there's something they're not telling us about this Monarch place. <laughs> Lawless, savage, and unemployed, huh? Sounds like murder, arson, and jaywalking. Hmm. Okay, now. I didn't expect to find New York City when I got in here. Add drone. Yeah, this is something. Rest and go. Rizzo's. Spacer's Choice. Vorst Beans. I almost feel like it'd be better to just explore this whole place myself. This is what? Drink efficiently. Bell's shells discovered. Are they, are they open? Hi. You know that sound when you've snapped on an injector clip? Ah, that's how you know your weapon loves you back. That's an oddly specific thing to say, but I suppose I am wearing a full suit of armor, so. Weapon modifications, huh? Okay. Uh, I need some information about weapon modifying, actually. I, specifically, I'd like to know the benefit of it. Why, it gets you the weapon best suited for your lifestyle. Since I haven't done it yet. All the better for performing a little percussive maintenance. Uh-huh. Self-improvement, including one's weapons, is always a worthy endeavor. Right. Take your basic dead-eye assault rifle. Perfectly serviceable. But what if you like finesse? Slap a scope and silencer on that bad boy. Bunker down in a bush someplace and pop off heads. <laughs> what if you like getting in close and making a lot of noise? Extended ammo magazine and a barrel heat sink to bump up rate of fire. Okay. Um, so they've said that mods are permanent. I have to attach a mod at a at workbench, so... Does modifying a weapon void the warranty? <laughs> uh, so I just buy these mods? Right here for a start. I got a fair selection. Modified weapons are my specialty. Uh-huh. And that's good. So, what can I get you? Let's see what we can trade for here. Uh, I get a 3% discount with her. I don't know why, but I do. All right, plasma rifle, 
plasma rifle, plasma rifle, shock cannon. Uh, are any of these LMGs? Grenade launcher. I just wanted to see if the LMG was a, a heavy weapon or not. Automatic pistol, light pistol, heavy machine gun, sawed off shotgun. Excuse me. So this is a heavy machine gun, which I would imagine is uh, is uh, an upgrade to the light machine gun, if I had to guess, the one that Parvati's got. So you will not have any uh, any armor pieces for me then. Critical damage, weapon range, plasma, weapon durability, these are restricted. There is a whole lot for me to look into buying and selling here. That's for sure. Oh, you can repair some stuff for me too if I need it. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I have a lot of looking around to do, I think, because there's a... There is a lot. There's a lot of stuff here. That I'm still not exactly to me, uh, on the up and up about. Who was talking about? Spacer's Choice Vendor. Oh, okay. The hell are you wearing on your head? Spacer's Choice logo, I would assume. You can't keep me out of there. Please don't make a scene, Dr. Fenhill. I am not making a scene. Uh, is there a problem here? I'm sorry. Am I causing a scene? I mean... See, Umfuru? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. So, is Jesse your friend then? Let me get one thing straight. Jesse and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? Uh-huh. As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. That's a little strange, isn't it? So you're, but you're checking in on her, then what? I'm confused. You say that like it's weird. I, it is a little, but I guess I was just curious, yeah. I just don't like to leave a debt unpaid. That's all. Oh, fair enough. So she has a, a debt then? That well, you owe a debt to her. All right. So her situation sounds normal to me. What was her situation again? I just want to look. Um, she's been here too long and she's not receiving visitors. Yeah, I guess that's fairly normal. Yeah, if she's in the morgue. Yeah, I guess that's fair, yeah. So, do you know she's not sick? Because I'm a doctor. I know what illness looks like. And Jessie was looking as sleek as a sprat in the Tyleritos last time I saw her. Oh, okay. And anyway, if someone suddenly comes down with a calamitous disease, it doesn't stay secret for long around here. <laughs> right. Fair enough. So you, I'm guessing this is where I come in. Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. Uh huh. So talk to Jesse. I mean, can I just bust in with my heavily armored goons here, basically? What seems to be the problem? Um. Actually, that's a fair question. Do you have supplies? Not without dispensation from Chief June Lei. Supplies are hard to come by out here. Okay, fair enough. Um, is it because of the lack of transport ships, or...? We don't have the ability to manufacture our own medical supplies here on Groundbreaker. Oh. Regrettably, we are dependent on the board for such mundane items as bandages and antibiotics, as well as more critical resources like adequately trained staff. Man, these guys are hanging on by a thread here. We really signed a supply agreement with anti -Cleos. But they demanded we only use their branded drugs, and that's simply not tenable. Yeah, I get that. Got to use the best stuff for the patient. When am I ending the stream? Probably fairly soon. Um, I usually end after about two and a half to between two and a half and three hours, and we're coming up on it here, and I'm getting a little tired, so I think I'm going to end it within the next like five or ten minutes. Can we see Jesse Doyle before the stream is over? Only my other patients had so many inquiring after him. I'll tell you what I've told the others. The records say Ms. Doyle checked herself in and requested I admit no visitors. The requests of our patients are paramount, so no, you may not see her. Hmm. The records say you've actually spoken to her yourself. What was she admitted for? Yeah, actually, you do make it sound a little suspicious when you say the records say. She's not my patient. 
I'm certain no one on my staff would falsify patient records, if that's what you're implying. And I wasn't, but I'm glad that you picked up on it, at least. Take care. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can go see this Jesse person ourselves. We could enter a restricted area here at the rate we're going. Man, there's a lot of people in here. Hmm. Restricted access, authorized personnel only. So I need an ID cartridge. Hello. That should help. I get the feeling that's going to become something very important to doing all of this stuff. Okay. So we have to go into a restricted area to see Jesse. Let me see if I can try out the this whole ID cartridge thing here. It might um, not go well, so I'm going to save real quick just in case, and then we'll we'll go from there. And I should probably equip the actual quest as well. What do we got here? Worst contact. It's a companion quest, so that I, I had a feeling, I had a sneaking suspicion about this Ellie character. That she was going to be a uh, companion. So even if she's not, maybe she's important to some other uh, companion. Alright. Let's see what we can do here. Save complete. Here we go. Put your gun away. Holographic disguise activated. Your holographic shroud is activated, giving you temporary access to the restricted area. Moving drains the shroud's energy. When it runs out, personnel will see and interrogate you. Talk your way out of the interrogation. To reset your shroud, it will get harder to talk your way out of there. Out the more you are interrogated. Okay. Operating room. I need to pick to get in here? Quarantine. Hi. Put your gun away. Sure, this is perfectly safe. I'd rather not die early of an infectious disease myself. We'll be fine. To the last ratchet on front in time. Leave me in peace. You ho headed quacks do know that restful recuperation requires not being disturbed. Don't you? Yeah, let's hope I don't die. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I may know that, but I'm actually not a quack. Ellie sent me. What? Why? Everything's fine. We're all fine here. No need for her to be worrying her pretty little head about me. I'm just terrible, dreadful, sick is all. Got a cough that won't quit and sores all over my body. Highly, lethally contagious. But I'll be fine, so long as I'm left alone. You do know she's a, a doctor, right? She's worried about you a lot. Open the door before I kick it down. I do have the intimidate for this now. I, I do have Parvati here who could probably kick the door down for me, so. Should have known she'd send a bruiser after me. Damned if I don't rue the day I saved her scrawny little hide. Inadvertently, I befriended a bloodhound in the process. We'll have to see right, about that. Okay. We can discuss this like the level headed folk that we are. That's all I'm asking. I've got to do something before Ellie goes jabbering my business to anyone with one ear and an intent to listen. <laughs> Alright, let's see what she's got here. Hi. The truth is, I'm not sick. But if you repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, I will deny it with my dying breath. Okay, then. You, uh, ain't with the board, are you? No, absolutely not. I owe them a lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So I hold up here to lay low. Uh-huh. I mean, I guess that's a uh, one way to go with this whole thing. <laughs> Lie 10. I work, do work for the board, actually. Uh, yeah, what, what got you in trouble? What? No, I didn't do anything. I'm a law-abiding denizen of this ship, I swear. Sure. Yeah, yeah, the board... You'd think the board's having someone follow you and you're hiding out, so that makes you law-abiding, yeah. uh-huh. I recognize a contracted killer when I see one, thank you. In my line of work, that's a skill you develop during week one, assuming you want to keep breathing. What is your line of work, right, anyway? I'll this part up, too, if it means you'll help me. I'm a thief. Ah. I specialize in particularly high-end and historically valuable items. Well, that explains why Please someone might have been contracted to kill you. That the Blood Tear Diamond, last worn by an heiress on the Lost Hope, had surfaced for the first time in 70 years. Hmm. The Blood Tear Diamond? So you went ahead and stole it, then? If I had, you'd think I'd be hiding out in the med bay. I mean, you'd be hiding out in the airlock. I was gonna steal it. Lined up Udom as my buyer. He paid half up front to finance the operation. And then... Let's just say things went sideways about the time I got my hands on the diamond. 
and it crumbled to stardust in my palm. Oh, that sort of sounds like that explosive cellular death that Phineas was talking about, except, you know, a, a uh, non-living thing, so. All right, well, anyway, Ellie wants me to help you, so. Udon Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. Well, at least we'd be even out then. So I guess we got to talk to Udom for something else now. All right. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Yeah, don't get too comfortable. I did just say I was going to kick the door down. So yeah, she, she's the one you're wanting to thank here. I thought, oh God, I need to get out of here before my shroud runs out. Run! Run for your lives! Phew! That was a close one. Almost didn't make it out of there. <laughs> Ooh, man. Well, actually, about that. So, um, I've, I've got it handled. That's all you need to know. Luck. The board's got an office on the promenade just before engineering. You can't miss it. I hope not. Considering all the neon signs and how I was basically starstruck when I got in here, I may just have to follow my objective markers here. But we have a couple of things to talk to Mr. Fanfiction Writer himself, Udon Bedford, about. Apparently, uh, he also knew something about Alex Hawthorne. I don't know if they were just pen pals, like via wireless email sort of stuff or what. We have a few places left to look here. I also need to look around and see if there's an armor vendor or something, and I need to get rid of a bunch of excess stuff that I have. So I might give this place a little look around, and I'll, like, save so that I, um, in case I, you know, come across a, a cutscene or a character or something like that that I don't really know anything about. Um, I would ha I wouldn't like be without showing that content on the actual stream. So I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can sell a few things and get my get my inventory in order because as you can see from here I've still kind of got a lot of inventory to get rid of. And then I will meet all of you back here for the next episode of the Outer Worlds the Stream Edition, which will be this Saturday at 4:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I had to front load the streams this week because of uh, Thanksgiving holiday coming up on Thursday here in the United States. So, yeah, we'll be back uh, on Saturday. Give myself a few days off to think about my spacefaring adventures. It figures. I just got the damn ship, and I'm already impounded. It's just great. Well, let's hope that that uh, changes and my luck turns around a little bit. On the next episode of The Outer Worlds, the stream edition, which, again, as I said, will be Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I did almost get stopped there. I'm glad that I made it out in time. I was messing around at first with the shroud because I didn't know what I was doing with it, and now I'm well. Now, now I now I know what to do with it. So hopefully next time will be a little better. So thank you for watching, everybody. I appreciate you coming out to Twitch and YouTube to check out the stream, and I will see all of you on the next one, uh, which as I said will be on Saturday. So until then, everybody, take care and have a good night.